Um, but yeah, he set me. He, he, uh, I got set up, and then this dude literally tried buying me off. He's like, "How much money do you want to take down the video?" I was like, "Bro, I didn't make the video to, for money. Like, I'm not asking you for money, bro. I haven't had any contact with you. I made that video to defend myself." That's crazy. One, one, one. Welcome to the Beautiful Day Podcast. Yo, I got put in my place over here. I came to this nigga podcast studio and recording studio, right? Yeah, yeah. Tight shit. And this nigga show me how to do this shit correctly. <laughs> nigga, the lighting and everything good. I appreciate you, <laughs> Hey, Jake. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for yeah, coming man. through, man. Hell yeah. For nah, sure. I'm, I'm hyped to be on your pod, bro. Yeah. It's been a minute. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. the first time we met? The first time we met was at Garrett Jenner's housewarming party. Yeah, that shit was lit, huh? Yeah, yeah. But, but actually, but you and me had an interaction before yeah, that. Speak about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, it's funny because Jeff's back here. and it, It's similar to conversation we were having right before. Um, mm -hmm. But I teamed up with the Barracks in 2020. Barra mm -hmm. approached me. I, I met the Barracks. We'll talk about all this stuff later. But like, mm -hmm. to give you a quick little rundown of how you and me came came to, to, to meet <laughs> is in 20, 2009, I won this contest at the Barracks, went to the first ever battle at the Barracks. Wait, what was the contest? It was, so they had this like social media site called My Barracks. Okay. And it was literally like MySpace or Facebook. I really but don't for, know. Yeah. But for skateboarders. Yeah. So this was like right when they started really popping off on their first, first spot. How long ago was this? 2009. Okay. So it was, started in 2008. And then I got, uh, the contest started at the end of 2008 and then I ended up getting announced as one of the main there were two main winners I was one of the main winners in 2009 the beginning of 2009 and then I believe the first battle of the barracks was January or February of 2009 so mm -hmm. uh, it's an all expenses paid trip to the barracks uh, I brought some friends with me and then we got to skate the whole weekend with all the pros which for me bro I was like a, th a kid bro I was like oh my god it was a, the dopest shit ever to this day like even though you know I now I uh, you know, I'm not fond of, of Barra and shit like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But to this day, like, I, I'm not going to take away of the experiences I had. That weekend was, to this day, one of the greatest weekends of my life. It oh, was yeah. a fucking blast. So, skated, and I uh, met Barra, who was, uh, at the time when the Barracks was really popping off, was very active on social media. Real and, quick, how big was Barra to you? you? You ever look up to him? or? Yeah, bro. I mean, uh, growing up skating, I yeah. watched uh, his skate videos. I had the DVS video, Skate More. I first came across him on a 411 video yeah. and he did this uh like day in, i forgot if it was a day in the life or just a day in his park but he had like a warehouse skate park mm. back in the day like early 2000s and uh i was like holy shit like i've never seen a skater have their own park maybe there were other people but like that i saw it and i was like yo this shit's dope so i was right. a fan of him as a skater and then when the barracks really started popping off i was like yo this thing is the shit i was like yeah. obsessed with the barracks all day every day watching every piece of content so this was like the beginning when they were really popping off with like buttery ass Mondays, Wednesdays with Retta, all the dope personalities, right? Mm -hmm. So I win this contest, go to the barracks, meet Barra, me and Barra uh, build like a friendship and mm -hmm. it was really dope. So he was like, yo man, anytime you want to come skate, come skate. I was like, hell fucking yeah. So that's how we me, me and him met. I was, uh, my family was kind of going through some tough times i got into a car accident didn't have any more right like i couldn't drive anymore so i couldn't get to the barracks so i ended up kind of like losing contact with the contacts that were there when i started driving again mm -hmm. so i was like fuck like uh how do i get back in the in the barracks and, and skate because i could hit him up but i never wanted i always felt like oh i'm just a kid mm -hmm. he's like this busy dude running this business that's you really popping off i was like yeah, I'm not, i don't want to be like like annoying right so mm -hmm. i would only talk to the channels with the, the people that i had met but they all got weeded out so they weren't working there anymore. I was like, what the fuck? So I was like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll run into him when I run into him. I ran into him a couple times at a DC shoot and some other places. So me and him kind of like knew each other. But at that time, he wasn't on any social media. So there was no way to like, like really just like tweet him yeah, or anything. Like, he yeah. didn't follow anybody. He didn't do shit or when he did get social media. But before he was like really against being on social media. So then I was like, oh, whatever. I was like, one day I'll run into him. And so uh, in 2020... Uh, I had posted this clip of me doing a kickflip free throw uh, on a basketball court. Mm. And uh, I sent it because, you know, the barracks would share people's videos. Like, people would tag them, and then if they thought it was dope, they would reshare it. So now Barra had Instagram. I never hit him up like, hey, man, you remember me? So I didn't, like, I didn't follow him. I don't think he followed me. But 
I went to send that to the barracks, and then I saw the, the barrel had an Instagram, so I sent it to him too. He saw it, liked it, followed me. Like, oh shit, fucking barrel, fucking sick man. How you been? Like, Bro, I was I was hyped as fuck. So I was like, damn, hell yeah, man. And then I I told him like, hey man, like uh, it's been quite a few years since I've seen you, but you know, again, that weekend is one of the best weekends of my life. Thank you. Mm. And uh, then I'll I'll cut all this extra stuff. I'll, I'll cut it down short because it, it's a long story. But now me and him become cordial. Invites me over to the barracks because I want to give him some some gear because he was liking like a lot of my posts on Instagram. So like, yo, let me bring you some doubt me stuff, man. He's like, yeah, come through. You was always doing doubt me back then. No, no, no. Okay, so we're fast forwarding. Okay, so, okay, so 2009 okay, okay. is when I first met him, yeah, and then yeah. we lost contact over okay, years. Okay, yeah, yeah, so then now yeah. in 2020, I do that skate clip mm -hmm. kick flip, uh, kick flip jump shot. Thanks. So then he we we get connected on Instagram on 20 in 2020. Mm -hmm. So then. He's like showing love on my Instagram. I am I have like doing a bunch of doubt me shit. He's liking my post and then he would like some posts that had like the models with the gear or whatever. I was like, hey man, mm -hmm. like I, if I'd love to come and bring you a package or or mail it to you. So I brought it to him and then he's like, hey man, I've been seeing what you've been doing. Podcasting, this and that, this and that. Uh gaming, podcasting, and what was the other thing that he was really interested in? Uh, and my tech channel. I have a tech channel for those hey, who don't know. You got a good eye because look what you're doing right now. <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> like it. Like I said, hey, bro. Thank you, man. Up, he, he set up everything for me. I was learning new <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. For those who don't know, man, like I, I do film production. I'm a filmmaker yeah. as a director, uh, as, a, as a cinematographer, colorist. Um, mm -hmm. I also do music production as an auto engineer, as a MC performer, all that stuff. So everything. I have a lot of skill sets that I've developed over the course of years because they're all passions. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, especially this is pandemic time. So I'm posting up like a bunch of stuff I'm doing live streaming and I build studios for people and I do a bunch of tutorials my tech channel teaches all the stuff that I know like how to do a podcast how to do uh, photography how to do filmmaking how to do this uh, and so he saw all these things like hey man like I've been wanting to expand the barracks to be bigger than what it is and beyond just skateboarding like what you're doing is awesome are you willing to do that here too like hell yeah so then we got connected let me fast forward to a bunch of other bullshit now uh, I had this idea in 2008, when I, I started making music in 2007, in 2008, I was like, man, it'd be really dope to make a beat out of, a, uh, out of skateboarding. But I never like did anything with it. And at the time, I didn't understand really how to capture the sounds properly and then flip them. So, but it was just an idea that I had. Yeah. And then in 2020, I did this beat making video out of a Tesla, a Model 3. And uh, one of the dudes at the barracks saw it and he was like, yo man, that shit was really dope. Like, would you want to do something with skateboarding uh, here with like making a beat out of skate sounds. I'm like, bro, I've been wanting to do that since 2008. I'd fucking love to like, and I, and I just, for whatever reason, never did it. And like, now it seems like it's perfect. Like the biggest platform in skateboarding, like fuck. Yeah. Like it just seemed like it was just meant to be almost right. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe in fate, but it just seemed like that. You don't believe in fate? Uh, uh, in fate. Yeah. I don't fate. have, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't think things are predetermined. Niggas, I got this shit tied on my wrist. I thought you yeah. said fate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like I don't think things are predetermined. Like okay. they're meant to be. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not. You know, if you do, that's well, all good. Know, but me. I was like, but it just felt that way. Where I was like, oh shit! Like it's meant to be. I finally make this video here at the barracks. It's gonna be perfect. It's amazing. And at this point, Bear is already bringing me on board to do gaming, podcasting, and he actually wanted me to do a tech, uh, tech content for them. And he was like, is would you mind doing tech with us? Even though you have tech, I was like, bro, I don't care. Like I don't mind. And so I have, bro. I still have every document that I've drafted for him. Like we had tons of meetings. So. It was uh, uh, in that early time frame of 2020 was the conversations that started escalating. We started then he, he gave me a, a room at the barracks to build a studio and I start getting ready to launch all my stuff. And then the game plan was to do a rollout of me of some content on the hyphen it to introduce me to the audience and then uh, go into the, the different pieces of content that I was going to create, which was uh, the doubt me. I mean, the. Barracks Gaming, which is a gaming podcast, which I did run and that had like 30 something episodes. Yeah. So me like this, but playing video games, right? Yeah. And then we were going to do the Barracks podcast and then the Barracks tech. Um, and so the first piece of content, I was like, oh, perfect. Let's do that beat making video as my first piece to introduce my uh, the hyphen it and doubt me to the audience. And so that's what I did. I made I made a beat. Um, I had never heard of you at the time. Didn't know what you did. Uh, and there were other people that I had heard, like that I knew of, that made beats out of stuff, mm -hmm. but I had never seen anyone take, ev like, make a beat exclusively from sounds from a skateboard. Yeah. So that was kind of like. You said it was somebody else. Who was his name? Oh again? no, there, there are people that made beats out of. But there was skate one that sounds. worked with like Waka Flocka. Yeah, yeah. So that's Mr. Green. Okay. So Mr. Yeah. Green did this like in 2010, yeah, so 2011. At the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I so so that. he made a beat out of skate sounds yeah. in like 2010, 2011, and Waka Flocka rapped on it. 
Okay. There's also Murs from the Living Legends, one of my favorite underground hip hop artists and groups of all time. I early 2000s, I believe. Mm-hmm. He did. Uh, Murs is dope. Yeah, Murs is dope, and uh, he has a song where they have skate sounds incorporated into the song. I think it's called Ambitions as a Rider or Rider, something along those lines. That's like a play on Tupac, right? So I make this beat, uh, and I took again the sounds from a skateboard, and I flipped them and made them. Uh, like sound design, where it wasn't just the sounds and then adding other organic sounds or other synthesized sounds. So I made a beat, put it out, and in the video, I believe I say like, um, to my knowledge, this is the first beat that's ever been made like this. Mm-hmm. And then the video goes out. Got it got a lot of traction. It got like over 100k in like the first couple of days. But on you what? on the barracks, yeah. it released on the barracks, the barracks YouTube. Fire. So um, it, it got a lot of love. And then I I kept seeing people say comment you and i was like i don't understand what that means i don't know what lamont holt is and so <laughs> damn no, but at, at the time no, at the you time mean, really? you know i didn't know I, I didn't i didn't know they were talking about a person or what it was right yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i was confused so you're like what the fuck is yeah this? and i was like all right cool and then then i saw people start saying lamont holt did it first mm. and so then um did you see my video after that? So then I saw your video. You did this Instagram video that was a little uh, throwing some slight shade. I was throwing hella shade. Okay. <laughs> Not at you personally, but I'll speak on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, I saw that right away, and I had I didn't know. And I'm all about giving love and showing pro- giving props and showing yeah. love to people who do whatever. That's why I fuck who, with whoever you. create yeah. whoever. And, and if I didn't know that someone did something before me, then yeah. I'll give all the props all day. Um, but looking at the video, I was like, okay, it's not what I did because you guys did it differently, which was still dope. Once yeah. I saw it, I was like, yo, this shit's fire. Yeah. It was a dope track. You guys did take skate Pretty sounds, crazy. incorporate into a beat, but it was different where you guys used like actual like 808 like kicks and snares. I know what you're saying. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was a mixture of skate sounds into uh, your producer so making it a beat. Percussions, it was mainly skate sounds. Yeah, so you guys every, used percussions, but the yeah, melodies yeah, and everything yeah, was yeah, not yeah, skate sounds. Yeah, yeah, so I was like, oh, this is very different. This mm-hmm. is not the same that I said I was doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, but either way, like I'm not trying to claim like I'm the first person to ever take skate, skate sounds because then Mr. Green had done it. Merce had done it, right? So then and when he told me that, I was like, huh? Then I looked, I was like, damn. Yeah, and they were and they, <laughs> they yeah, niggas did this shit yeah, before. Yeah, because they were years <laughs> before you. So then I started commenting to people. I'm like, yo, then my whole didn't do it first. First, like if you're talking about doing it first, bro, I think it's either Merce or Mr. Green. And yeah. so I was like, but either way, like I wasn't saying like I'm the only person to ever take skate sounds. So then I tried to clarify my thing. I was like, oh, whatever. But yeah, then, but that. yes, yeah, so but then when I saw your video, I was a little annoyed because I was like, bro, was like kind of, you know, you throwing some shade, and now I'm like, bro, like. I don't know you, so that was the point. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but the, anytime I ever have an issue with anybody, my first thing is, I don't do anything online. I go and approach the person. Yeah. I either if I get in contact with them. So I hit up Gary because I saw he was your friend. It's my nigga. And then because Gary had commented something, and so I was like, "Hey, bro, like that's your boy. Uh, give him my number and tell him to call me." Because uh, he posted up a video and uh, I I, I want to talk to him. So you hit me up and then I told you straight up like everything I just said right here. I was like, bro, like I've been wanting to do this forever. I've been making music. I didn't see your video. Your video is dope though. Uh, But I definitely did something different. And then it was all good vibes. Like it was chill. But uh, yeah, like I don't let things escalate. I'll I'll address it. And then if someone wants a problem, we got a problem. But I don't don't want problems. Like I want to talk about it, you know? So like. Like you say, you didn't even know at the first place. Let me tell my point of view real quick. (laughs) Yeah. Me, it's not even personally you, even though you're the one that's doing it. (laughs) But. It's the fact that the barracks was blowing that shit up. And I'm like, yo, I've been fucking with y'all for a minute. Y'all know I've been doing this music shit for a minute. And I've been telling y'all this shit. Again, I know they probably doing a lot of shit or whatever. But they also my salty shit. I'm like, all right, we out here going crazy. Put like put it on for skaters doing the music shit and really doing our stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, I see this nigga. Again, you was random as fuck to me. No offense. You know, yeah, no, nah, it's all, yeah, you didn't know me. Vice versa. So I'm just like, yeah. all right, I'm fed up. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call it out. Yeah, <laughs> but then when you hit me, I was like, "Oh, he confused too." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, like I'm not, I'm not, I don't like the internet drama shit. Like, if I got a problem with someone, or someone has a problem with me, like we we handle it right away. I feel that. And like, it never has to see the light of day online. Yeah. Uh, now, if people keep going and making something a, an issue, then it goes where it goes. But like, to me, it's unnecessary. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm a grown ass man. I try to be mature and handle things properly. So let's address it. And I'm pretty sure we can get on the same page. He really and did if, do that. He hit me up. Yeah, like, yo, have him call me. 
Yeah, it's yeah. Real nigga. Yeah, it's I'm, rare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like unnecessary, man. And then yeah. after that was cool. And then I saw you at Garrett's house and it was all good vibes. We, we had drinks. Up. We turned <laughs> up, bro. We had a Shit. blast, man. Hell yeah, we're turning uh, up yeah, now. Bro, yeah, bro. so that's how we met. Long story. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, like it, it was, I didn't, I could have felt a certain way. At first I was like annoyed, but I was like, bro, like he don't know me. I don't yeah. know him. Yeah. It ain't that serious. And then it's been good vibes since. And uh, that was the last time I saw you though, man. But we, we, uh, we stay on, in contact online. Yeah. yeah, man, it's been a minute. So then when I saw you doing your podcast, I was like, oh, that's fucking dope, man. And you've been killing it, bro. That shit was it, hell, too. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let me try a podcast. I did it with uh, Jeff. Shout out Jeff. He over yeah, there. Yeah, Jeff the Cesare back here, man. Jeff's dope as fuck, man. Yeah, he helps me with a lot of questions and shit. I be calling you. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, help me with the questions. But um, we did the podcast with him first. And Sick. Then it did whatever. And then the next podcast did good. Yeah. So going up. Nah, man. Sure. Yeah, nah, bro. Like, I it, I see a lot of traction. It's, it's, you're killing it, bro. So... Nah, props to you, bro, for just continuing to create, Cheers. especially in this uh, ever-evolving state. Cheers, you got to drink that. Oh, for sure, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't, I don't mind drinking. I don't mind drinking. <laughs> um, I don't drink that often, but when I do, I like to drink. I be sipping. Yeah. I, I very, I very rarely slow sip. I'm like, we came like, in this shit shot, crazy shot. though. Like we already, you came about in lit. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we was like, nigga, I didn't even want to speak about where we was at earlier, but um, <laughs> I want to ask you the basic questions first. Yeah, so, yeah. Where were you born and raised? I was born and raised in LA. Um, I grew up all over LA, kind of like broken home type situation. A lot of like internal issues within uh, my parents and uh, family. What part so, of LA, if you don't mind? So I, I was born in HP, but I've lived in so many different places around LA. Like I don't cling, like claim or cling to a specific city. Okay. Because I've lived everywhere. I've lived like, bro, like literally everywhere. And then. Like I used to switch schools all the time. Uh, it wasn't until like I got to like middle school that like uh, my my schooling became consistent. And then, uh, but yeah, I was bouncing around a lot. So and then I had family all over SoCal. So I would kind of like spend weekends here, spend weekends there. And then my friends like I had a lot of freedom growing up. So like my mom like let me go spend the night in Fontana with my friends over there. That like, who moved? Uh, you was traveling. Yeah. <laughs> I was everywhere, man. I'd be in, I'd be in Long Beach. I'd be in. Uh, Fontana, Moreno Valley, I'd be in the Valley, uh, Pacoima, Reseda, uh, pff, bro, like uh, the 626, everywhere, man. So, yeah, I, I grew up in a lot of places, man. And, and skateboarding was a big reason why I was out and about, too, because when I did, I only had a, a core group of friends that liked to skate for certain years, and they all fell off. I, I stuck with it, kind of. I slowed down because I didn't have anybody to skate with, Fair but man. it always, like, I still kept doing it here and there. But like with my friends that when we would skate all the time was always like, let's go here, let's go here. So we'd take the bus to wherever. So we'd be in, bro, we'd fucking pull up to random ass hoods, bro. And like, <laughs> it was like, I was like, I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm here to skate. And I was kind of, I was a little naive too. Cause I would think like, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. I used to think I was like Superman. Now I'm like more cautious about how I act. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I was like, bro, I'll go anywhere. I don't give a fuck. I used to go to Compton. I used to go to fucking South Central. I used to go wherever, bro. And I used to I dress like you. super baggy and like, I, I don't give a fuck, bro. I wasn't um, dressing baggy, but yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. So people used to always mistake me for like a, like a gangster. Cause yeah. I dress super baggy yeah. and, uh, and people would like come hit me up. Like, where you from? I was like, bro, like I just skateboard, bro. And they'd be like. You not from anywhere? I'm like, nah, bro. I skate. Like, I got my I'd be board here, bro. The fuck out of it too. Like, nah, yeah. I'm just skateboard. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, bro. You want to skate with me? But like, I was always cool. Like, I never came off confrontational. So I was like, nah, bro. Like, I'm here to just skate, man. Like, nah, and then be like, oh, okay. And then they see me do some tricks. That's what's up, homie. You know, yeah, like, oh, yeah, good shit, you, bro. You know. You. So, uh, but yeah, I kind of like grew up all over the place, man. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, bro. A lot of different environments. When did you get into skateboarding? Shit. Uh, twenty two thousand. I think 2001 or 2000 is when the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 game came out. It's always a Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Bro. Nigga, that the, shit. Tony Hawk is literally like everyone's father, bro. He like, he, he birthed so many of us. White nerd. Fact. Say a lot. Uh, Jeff DeChez right back here saying, I'll, I'll repeat Come it over for here. you. Come over here, get closer to uh, the I'll, mic. I'll repeat it if you want me to. But. Yeah, do your thing. Speak about it. Be on the camera. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right, so... If anyone wondered why my purpose... All right, so hey, hey, hop right onto the mic. No cameras right now. <laughs> this is big pause. Big pause. One, one, one. Go ahead. Put your, uh, mic all low, put your mouth next to his big black mic. Nigga, pause! <laughs> 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 Go ahead, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone ever wondered my purpose of being on this podcast is to bring up these um, skate nerd facts. So the first Tony Hawk game came out in 1999. You're right. 
You're right. Not 2000. You're right. 99. That's facts. I don't want to be a dick, but I'm just saying. No, hey, I like being corrected, man. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, like, oh, don't correct me. Okay. That's how you. That's how I learned. So, nah, I appreciate that. From yeah, now nigga. on, for forever, I'm gonna remember 99. Yeah. And if you're wrong, nigga, you yeah, get yeah. to sock him in the face. Well, hey, that's dope. <laughs> because I only know that because yeah, I got into skating the same reason because that game. Yeah. That's yeah. My homie started skating uh, after the game. So me and my homie got addicted to the game. But then he started skating with his friends, and he lived in Fontana. He's mm. the, he grew up with uh, uh, living in my near my city. Okay. He went to school to, with me, but then he moved. But we stayed friends. And my mom was like, bro, my mom's like the dopest person ever. She would like not only take me everywhere to skate, but she would go and pick up my friends, take me, drop me off at their house, or like my mom was like all like. Ooh, it was, bro, she was like yeah. the best Uber ever, bro. And she would take take us to skate, take me over there. I would go spend the weekend in Fontana, and so then I befriended all my homies' friends, and uh, they would skate, and I got addicted. And since then, bro, it's been it's been alive in me. You, you went know? crazy with it. I would I went kind of crazy. I didn't go that crazy with it. I I, I, mean, I saw some clips, bro. You feel me again? Like I didn't. Know. I, I had a I, I did have um, an older guy who had moved. He, I mean, he was still in high school, but I was in middle school. Uh, a, a dude moved in to my neighbor. He, he was in the foster, foster care system. His name is Rudy. He ended up skateboarding. I saw him, and so then we started connecting. And like, he literally, he took me kind of. He, he like showed me everything that he knew. And so I started progressing like insanely fast, like super quick. I I was like in less than a year, I was like alling off roofs and stuff. And uh, God damn. yeah, like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like <laughs> less I, I, than a year. <laughs> yeah, bro. It, like, I remember. I remember seven months, and I jumped. I jumped off like this roof. And my board snapped, and I was like, "Damn!" Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I was progressing really quick. But then what ended up happening was like, I progressed. Maybe I don't know too fast. I'm not trying to be like egotistical about it, but like I progressed so fast that like I ended up having no friends that like took me to another level. I get you. And then in my area, no, like nobody skated in my area. He, uh, he came from a different city, so like this. Uh, at this point, I was living in Downey, and in Downey, nobody skated. Mm -hmm. uh, at least at that time frame, or at least at, at my age range. Yeah. So I kind of like. Started growing pretty quick skill wise, and then I peaked, and then all my friends stopped skating, and so I kind of just like I've kind of just been chilling in that same spot forever. Um, <laughs> but but I I, I kind of quickly realized that like filmmaking was was wifey first, and okay. so like that was the thing that I was like, this is what I want to do in my life. I remember when I was in seventh when did grade. Did you realize that? So I started doing. And how? It actually, I used to do backyard wrestling because I loved wrestling WWF at the time. Now WWE. You was clotheslining niggas, bro. I was, bro. <laughs> he was I was, bro, I was doing Stone Cold Stunners. I was doing. Uh, I don't know if you remember Jeff Hardy, bro. But yeah, I used to, yeah, I used to yeah, do yeah. the. I used to, I used to love jumping off things. You so had I would the like ring and everything. Or what? No, so the way we did it because I didn't have a ring. Yeah, we would just yeah. set up like blankets and mattresses to be like where the ring yeah, would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we would just kind of like abide by that space yeah, yeah, yeah. as like. Our ring. That's the out. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but my mom, I would ask my, my, bro, my mom was so cool, but I would ask yeah. her when we would go to the grocery store, you know how like the, the, the wrestlers would hit each other with chairs. So, you know, all those like aluminum foil things that people buy like to take foods like for like potlucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, those like super thin yeah, ones, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, mom, can you buy me these? Like for what? I was like, so we want to hit each other over we the can, head with them. Yeah, yeah. We want to beat the shit out of each other. And she's like, all right, but don't get hurt. I was like, all right, stupid. bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I used to make tables and break through tables, bro. Like, nah, that's kind of cool because everybody was on that type of shit, but we never took action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, nah, bro. Great. I loved, I loved, to this day, I still love wrestling. So yeah. that's how. I started doing video, filming it, and then teaching. Uh, my uncle taught me how to edit. This is before a computer, bro. Or I mean, computers were out, but they were super expensive, and I didn't know anything about computers. Mm -hmm. And he taught me how to take from the tapes, record from the tape into a VCR, and then from that VCR to another VCR to take edits and add music, splicing it with a boombox and a Y cable. It's like this intricate process, right? But it worked. So I, I would make my little highlight videos for wrestling. So then when I got into skateboarding after Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, then I was like, that's how I did my skate videos. I had my first skate video, which is actually up on my on the Doubt Me Skate YouTube channel. Check that out. Uh, Lincoln, but I, but the original the audio had Linkin Park, A Place For My Head, as my song. And so what I did was, now the version that's up is to one of my current songs. But uh, you don't hear any skate sounds because every, there was no like individual clips. right? It was all baked into this tape. But yeah, so that's how I started doing film. 
in, in school, I started doing every little presentation, every project I could that was like, uh, oh, here's a presentation on the Wild West. Here's a presentation on this book by whoever the author was, right? Yeah. And instead of presenting it in front of the class, I was like, can I make a short film? Everyone was like, what the fuck? This is before like people started making videos. There were no smartphones or any apps like that, right? So all my teachers were like, uh, sure, I guess. And I would make these videos, bro, like short film. I would write intricate stories yeah. with like with a backstory for this character and that character. And it was just cheesy little fucking school shit, you know? Yeah, but it was creative. But yeah, and so um, from there, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to make films. I want to be a director. And I like editing and filming and all that stuff. So I still do that, do that to this day. You like everything that's creative, nigga. You're doing everything. I have a lot of loves, man. I, I joke around with people like I'm like, I'm a Mormon when it comes to my career. I got a lot of wifeys. That's right. Bars. I want to ask you too. Um, I mean, obviously, I know the qu uh, the answer to this question yeah, yeah. now. Um, did your parents support your skateboarding? Yeah. So my dad was in and out of the picture, and then then he was like pretty much out. Uh, mm. That dude, even when he was in, he he was actually a pretty bad dude. He wasn't a good guy. When did Not, he leave the picture? My mom actually had to like kind of like hide from him. Damn. So like we like literally bounced from where we lived and school system and everything and went to a whole new city and went like MIA like hiding. Yeah. Um so he wouldn't find us cuz he was he was a crazy dude. Damn. Um and so yeah, so we were like low key for a while, but then he kind of would come back in the picture over time and get back in the picture for a bit and then his true colors would reveal themselves and we were stupid we're like we're naive like oh like he's going to be different he's different he's yeah, changed and hoping yeah hoping but when he he was in for a little bit those little portions like yeah like he took me to skate uh, spots and stuff like that and then he helped me build like a like a like a box once um so he wasn't 100% of the time terrible but he was terrible a lot should happen and so um he so yeah he kind of was like in and out my mom though was like super supportive anything whatever just I got you. I got you. And like my mom was as a, she was a single parent pretty much because even when he was in and out, he wasn't like he wouldn't contrib contribute. Fully involved. No, no yeah. he would he would just come in and try to get like the dope parts of be like, oh, like I'm uh, let me take you shopping or let me take you to this thing. And a lot of times he bitched about everything he wanted he he did for us, but he would come in and like, oh, like we will go do this, and then I'm a great dad because I took you to golf and or to this mini golf place or the this and that. And then and the when it came to, to all the crazy about it, just to be super happy about, it. yeah, I get you. Man. Yeah, and then yeah. and then all the responsibilities and all the hard work was yeah. all on my mom, and it, mm -hmm. he wouldn't pitch in with any of that stuff. So it was all my mom for sure, like ninety nine point nine percent my mom. And uh, but yeah, man, like she she was super supportive. Um, she, I'm telling you, she would pick, take my friends, pick up my friends, take us on trips. Like for my thirteenth or fourteenth birthday, I think it was. Um, my, my what I wanted was a trip to San Francisco to go skate all the famous skate spots, and so she took me and my friends on a trip. Those got spots us, suck too. That's crazy. Those, like, right. they're, 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 I mean, they're hard to skate. They're super hard to but, skate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> None of them were like easy to skate, yeah. but they were so dope. Yeah. You know, and iconic, so iconic, iconic, and I just from watching it on videos, I'm like, yeah. that's what I want to skate. Yeah. And so my mom took me. She got us, uh, me and my friends, our own room, yeah. and. She would drop us off wherever and then go out with, with my family. And then when I would call back and be like, hey, like, can, you know, take us to this next spot. All right, pick us up, drop us. So, yeah, it was dope, bro. Like, I, I had a blast and my friends yeah. always had a blast. It was all good memories there, man. Yeah, um, man. yeah skateboarding is, is, is gave, given me so many of my best memories in life. Yeah, so you were saying you was going through a lot of places in L.A. What are some struggles you dealt with skateboarding? Because when you skateboard, and I ask this all the time, yeah. you, you everywhere. You see a lot of shit happening. What are some things that bad that's happened? You know what? I got very, very lucky, bro. Like super lucky that like, I, I think I don't. Did I say this on the pod, right? Where I was like super naive. I said this earlier, right? I was super naive, thinking like I was Superman. Nothing could happen. I'd go anywhere, everywhere. If there was a dope spot or someone told me about a dope spot, I I didn't care if I heard that it was filled with this gang or this gang or this and that. Mm -hmm. I was always very cautious. I always had like yeah, some like, nigga, I ain't doing nothing. So what yeah, the fuck, yeah, nigga, I don't give a shit. <laughs> but looking back, I'm like, yeah. it, was, it was it was dumb. Yeah. I shouldn't be dancing with the devil like that at that age, or I shouldn't have been. I feel you. And so, but I got lucky, bro. I got so fucking lucky that like nothing ever really bad happened. The only thing really bad that ever happened to me, skateboarding wise, was injuries. Mm. Like cracking my head or you cracked you know. your head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How the fuck that happened, <sighs> bro? I, so frontside flips were like my go to trick at one point. This was in 2006. I remember very clearly fall 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing frontside flips at this skate park all the time. Like uh, the eight 
eight stair front side flips were like what skate park? Uh, Carruthers, Carruthers, however they pronounce it in Bellflower. Uh, it, it's kind of a shitty skate park, but it actually has some little gems in there. Okay. And they had this eight stair, which has a horrible run up. But for some reason, I, you know, when, when you skate a park that's shitty, you adapt to it, right? Mm. You you kind of get the hang of it. Shit at that point. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would do front side flips like all day. That was like my shit. And I went. It was like a warm up trick for me at that point. I over rotate it and. Um, landed almost primo, but it was in between primo and regular, mm-hmm. so it didn't fully land primo. So when I my one of my feet, like or, uh, actually both my feet, landed on the board, but they didn't. It didn't land primo, so I didn't land and and like minimize uh, my motion. Okay, you know, like when you land a little, like you absorb, and then yeah. you kind of fall a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was like my foot tried hitting the like landing on the board, but because it wasn't. At a perfect angle, it just shot out. So what ended up happening is before like my body actually could absorb any impact from the fall and the speed, my feet shot out. So I like I went like this and shot like yep. that before absorbing, and so yep. the I, <laughs> my legs flew up and my head cracked the floor, uh. and it was like super super smooth floor, but it cracked so hard that like it wasn't like a scrape where I got a big gash. It smacked so hard that my skin broke. Like it was just like straight to the to, to the back of my head, oh, and it God. broke open into like these. It was like like a big X that like opened up, Mm-mm. and it just like a movie. I, I yeah. felt it, almost like a like an electric shock on my body. Yeah. It felt like this like zzz, like feeling. Yeah. It didn't make that sound, but it felt like that. <laughs> and so, I I smack my head, and I'm like, fuck. And I, at the time I was 16 or 17. Oh, no. My mom had dropped me off. I wasn't driving it, and I went to skate by myself. So I was like alone oh, at the park. You by yourself too? Yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy. And so I got lucky <laughs> that, that bro, I'm so lucky I didn't get knocked out. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. because I I smacked my head and I like fell on my back and I kind of got up and I was like fuck. And then I I like I touched the back of my head and it feels like moist, like kind of like wet. Mm-hmm. And I'm still trying to comprehend like how fucking bad whatever this hit was. And I kind of get up or I sit up and then like a movie, bro, just like blood just starts pouring. Like like a like a waterfall, bro. I'm like what the That's fuck? That's one of my biggest fears, bro. It was scary, yeah. and but but I, but at that point, I was like kind of like, I had a little bit of ego when it came to like presenting myself, and so I used to like always be like super dressed up, and I always like to look dope, oh, and man. I was like, I didn't want scars. I'm like, you oh know what no. I hate about that, bro. Because back, I mean back then, like <laughs> You used to look down on us for doing that type of shit, trying to be extra dressed up. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Now everybody's doing that shit now. You but I get I mean? it though. Like it, it is. It is. It, it was ego. It's for sure ego. Yeah. Where it was like I want to look dope, and I used to like you know love hollering like at the that. females, bro. I was like, shit. bro. I was, <laughs> I, bro. Especially in high school, I was like super into f- girls, bro. So I was like, be. yeah, ahead. yeah. And so I was like, oh, the first thought in my head it was just so stupid. Thinking back, like, bro, I should have been worried about my health. I was thinking I'm gonna have a big ass scar on the back of my head. That's gonna be girls are not gonna like it. It was like so that was like my first thought. It was so stupid. And so then I get up and I'm fucking now drenched in blood, bro. I take off my shirt and I ball it up and I just p- push it as hard as I can against my head. And, like just to stop the bleeding. Cause I'm like, I don't want to fucking bleed out. The way it's looking looks like I'm just gonna like scary. It looks like a waterfall. Mm-hmm. So I call my mom and I was like, and I, I didn't want to panic or uh, get her worried because she panics. And I was like, hey mom. Uh, can you come pick me up? She's like, I just dropped you off. I'm like, yeah, but I fell and I'm kind of hurt. I think I need to go to the hospital. And she's like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? You gotta go to the hospital. I'm like, uh, I hit my head and I'm bleeding a little bit. And you she's talking like, oh, calm like that too? For sure. Yeah, you're trying to make sure she. Oh, cl- bro, yeah, yeah, cause like, cause I was uh, luckily it didn't like disorient me. Like yeah. I wasn't like, I, like zoned out. Yeah, 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 I was still fully rational. So I was like, okay, my mom, like I, this, I wasn't even in pain. I was like, I think in shock. Um, from all the blood, but like I wasn't like hurting, and I could stand up. Um, so I was like, nah, let me make sure she's cool, she's calm. And then my like she still whenever she tells a story to her friends, she's like, and this guy, he's I can't believe this. He skated <laughs> down the hill to come to my car, and he just uh, with his, all this blood in his hand and his shirt. Um, that's one way for her to brag though. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, my son's tough. <laughs> and I was like, no, I was just worried about scars. Um, but nah, so then we went to the hospital. I got, re- I got like seven staples, two stitches. So yeah, yeah most of the things that happened that were bad skateboarding wise were just injuries, bro. Injuries I, I got mad, mad ankle injuries. Like so many. It's I ridiculous. Feel you on that. <laughs> bro, it's the worst. Like, bro. And then every time I'm like, oh, my ankle's getting strong. Yeah. Blap. 
Some bullshit happened. Yeah, man. Bad luck with ankle injuries yeah, for sure. I had two ankles praying at the same time. Once. Fuck. That's what happens when you're trying to get a video part done. I'm gonna so you were skating with a messed get, up ankle? To get to the nuts. So I was skating on a messed up ankle. Damn. And then I tried to skate again. I fucked my shit up on the trade flip. So what were your favorite uh, sponsors growing up? Uh, I was... I would say I think the one that really stuck out to me that I was like, yo, this team, the roster, the music, their videos, I was just like, uh, uh, shorties. Shorties, bro. Shorties. Yeah, bro. Like, fulfill the dream. Guilty, they bro. they still doing that shit. They player. <laughs> well, I mean, Brandon Turner's still killing it, bro. At this age, I mean, just a couple years ago, he got trick of the year, uh, right? The trick, trick of the year? Yeah, trick of the year oh, with his hard flip on Wallenberg, switch hard flip on Wallenberg, and he's like 40-something, I think. Oh, or? he was on shorties? Yeah. yeah he bro, he was a child, shit. bro. It was Chad Muska, um, Brandon Turner, Peter Smolik, who growing up was like my favorite skater of all time. Uh, just his steez, bro. His steez was just so, to this day, my favorite steez of all time. The Why way the he would skate. Shorties go out of business, then. Uh, I don't. I don't know the details, but I know that at some point, like there was like some tension, um, and then I don't know what happened. They ended up going their separate ways, and then Brandon Turner and Peter Smolik ended up doing Skate Mafia, amazing. Um, with uh, with one of their homies, and then. And then yeah, I don't know. It just yeah, it happens. Most teams don't like brands. Have, there are only a few that have lasted a really long time, solid. Some of them's kind of like still are around, but they're not like a big roster. I had some nigga ask me if Baker was still lit, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Is I'm it? Of Baker. I don't know. I think so. Like. I, you know what? I've been. I, no, that's not. I'm not hating. Like I love Baker so much, but I I am a little out of touch with current uh, teams, bro. It, it's it, you know what? It's because we're in an era right now where they're just everything's on social media so quick you know like i follow skaters and i don't even know who they're sponsored by because they're just posting up clips all the time and i'm like holy shit that's dope that's dope that's dope can't keep up now and, and, and people are doing very few teams are doing skate video part uh, skate mm -hmm. videos with a bunch of parts yeah. so it's hard for me to keep track of, of brands and and board companies for you and that all right let's get into it for real for real <laughs> <laughs> you got some questions i hear 100 percent I saw your videos about the barracks and shit. I saw a little bit of it. I need yeah. to know some more. But how did you get a part of the barracks? So tapping into what we talked about earlier, Barra came across me about what, what I was doing on social media mm -hmm. and then invites me in to be a part of the barracks. Mm -hmm. So I won't go over the whole entire story because I have like it's so long. Like even my short video, which those who haven't seen, there's a video called How How the Barracks, parentheses Steve Barra, or it's the other way, how the how Steve Barra, parentheses the barracks did me dirty, right? So that was my first video. I did this video in the January 2023 where I, I shared my whole story, my whole progress, my whole process of getting there, what they promised me, what they wanted to do with me. And when I say they, it was really just Barra. So what they promised you? Uh, psh, bro. Like I told you, Barra saw these things I was doing on social media. It's like, I want to do that. So Barra has had this thing where he wants to be big. He wants to build like this big uh, empire essentially, right? Which, which is dope. It's a dope idea. You know, yeah. I want to do the same and I know a lot of other people and there are a lot of moguls out there like that shit's a do a dope. It's not easy to do that. It's not, it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, I feel it. But, and so I'm not knocking that at all. Like he, he yeah. definitely had this thing where like the barracks is huge. We have a big platform and we want to make it bigger. Barra, he wants to make it bigger and do things beyond skateboard. He wants it to become like this pop culture thing. That's why he wanted to build Barracks podcasting, Barracks gaming, Barracks tech, all these other things. I'm like a lot of you. I'm surprised on that. I respect that. That's crazy, but yeah, I'm surprised because the Barracks was trying to do that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Yeah, well, it was him. That's what I'm saying. Like, That's why I'm, I'm surprised that they was trying to do all that shit because I feel like they was going against them. anyway. Oh, so. oh like, like in the <laughs> beginning, they were like anti yeah, everything. Yeah, well, I shit. think I think that's why like I would see people hate on Barra. I mean, now I know. Yeah. so much behind the scenes bro like now i know why he gets a lot of flack from not just the fans but from his friends don't even really like him a lot you know like i, I i've crazy. heard some crazy stuff bro yeah. and so um but before as a, as a fan i was like why do people hate on barra online like i don't get it i only knew him from skate videos and in the barracks when it started popping off so i was like just a super fan right yeah. but i was like i don't get it like he just seems so nice he seems so loving about skateboarding like what 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 is it behind the scenes i see all the shit it what it is like oh damn like, he's he's a he's he's a wild dude um on his behavior and his, the way he thinks right but yeah. in the barracks itself he wanted to expand it and i think one of the reasons that he would get flack from just fans was he was super anti um you know corporations anti big brands it was all about core 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 but then when it came down to like money or deals or whatever, you know, opportunities that came from certain celebrities or people with, 
with money or resources, he wouldn't give a fuck about the core and then just make barracks be contradiction. A hundred <laughs> exactly. That's Contra- a, that's exactly where I think he started getting his 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 main hate too, which yeah. is annoying. Yeah, it's like, yeah. bro, like like the, I don't think that you have to be core to be dope. Like I think you could have a big brand involved. You could do dope shit. If you're doing something with big brands and it's paying the skaters that deserve to get paid and they're doing some dope creative project with skateboarding, I'm all for it. I don't I don't feel like it's got to be this underground thing that no one fucking only me and my friends like and no one else can like and it can't be mainstream like I don't give a fuck about the that. The reason that fucks me up about it is like the, the best skaters that deserve a lot of money that's really putting this work in ain't getting no money from this shit and that's because y'all are keeping this shit away from being in the broad and like everybody understand it. You heard about the whole, I mean, I could be wrong. But we remember like Thrasher and shit was getting upset with Justin Bieber and Rihanna wearing their shit. Uh, I mean, I don't know too much about that. To me, this is how I see it. Like, I don't give a fuck. If you like skateboarding, even if you don't skate, but you like it and appreciate it, like dope. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't feel like you have to be able to do a bunch of bangers in order to be part of the culture. I yeah. do, but, but yeah. if you're trying to like, like be fake and use skateboarding to sell some units on your album or your music video or your merch. I get that. And, and then you're not really about skateboarding. That's kind of when it annoys See, me. I'm the like, thing with me with that is like, so there's people like, I mean, I guess I get you hundred percent, but it's just like when you have that opportunity of like somebody that's bigger than skateboarding, that's down to just rock your shit. You mm-hmm. can tell them not to <laughs> rock it. It's like, yo, we don't have that much money in skateboarding for us to pay the pros that deserve to get paid mm. because of shit like that. I could be wrong. Yeah. But that's how I was looking on the outside. Yeah. It, it's skateboarding is weird, man. Like I've noticed that like a lot, especially now those years that I put that I was with uh the barracks and then seeing and then befriending and, and getting to know a lot of the people beyond uh in the on the behind the scenes of, of skateboarding, it's like a lot of people are very like territorial. There is gatekeeping, there's a lot of like we want it this way, not that way, but then I will do that way if I can win off of it, and then it's like I, honestly, man, like, I, I try to stay away from all that. Even when I was at the barracks and I started seeing all this shady shit happen, I was like, so the moment I would see shady behavior, I stayed the fuck away from those people. I was like, I don't want to hang out with these people. I don't want to engage in any meaningful conversations with the people. I'll say, what's up? I'll be cordial to everybody. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Blah, 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 blah. What's that shady shit but, that you saw? Bro. Man, I mean, first off, with all, all the shady shit they did to me, yeah. right? Which you guys can go see on, on my video. Um, Link in the description. They appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so so, uh, yeah, that that way I don't like make it too repetitive, but yeah, like, you know, uh, the beginning bear brought me in because he saw that I could be an asset to them because of the the skill sets that I that I have and what I'm capable of doing and I'm a hard worker. I'm a very hard worker and I, I I'm a, I'm a man of my (laughs) word. Like first and foremost, like I've always been taught, like what you say is bond. Like you don't, you don't go back on what you say, you deliver whatever time, whatever, uh, promise whether it's a project whether it's multiple projects whatever there's a deadline like you follow through and so i always held on to that and um and i excelled in all the things that he wanted to do and wanted me to be a part of but then when it came down to him holding up his end of the bargain which in the beginning was uh yo man like come and help us do this we don't have money right now which i didn't understand at the time and he played me he definitely played me now i know bro i know so much of his financials i know the barracks financial i know i have like all the inside of like the money that was being made and lost that like now i know a lot of the shit he was saying was bullshit but in the beginning he was like uh he was saying we don't have any money because hype beast who's 51 percent owner controls everything yeah. Hype Beast was 51% owner. Never they didn't control that damn thing. I mean, they controlled some things on money where like they did have to do things through like a contract or they they observing what I what I saw is Hype Beast was actually very professional. They handled things the way a business should be run. But Bear liked to do a lot of handshake deals and this and that, and then like not do things on, through the proper channels that you're supposed to. So he was like, Oh, they they don't let us spend any money on this or that or whatever, whatever. And so he was like, yeah, I'm trying to buy Hypebeast out because they're running our business into the ground. They're running our business for the last two years. They've been bleeding us dry. We've lost like over a million dollars in the last two years. Damn. And I was like, damn. So he played this, you know, Barra is a narcissist. And he, a lot of his personality traits are that of a narcissist. And they follow into all his things that he's doing, like victim mentality. Oh, my God, poor me. I want to do this, but I can't. I want to help you, but you help me, and I'll help you later. All these little things, right? Sound like the skate industry, period. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, 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 for sure. 
Um, <laughs> just make sure yeah, go ahead, right. check that. Yeah, yeah. okay. I be so, feeling comfortable over here because this nigga checking like I be checking. That's why I be looking at the <laughs> yeah, cameras yeah, and yeah. shit. Uh, uh, hell yeah. I can tell you. So then he's like, yo, man, I don't have any money to pay you, which should have been a red flag to me. Mm. I already had been doing like my own business, nothing at that scale. So like I had been like doing my own business for many years already, but all small scale shit. This was next level. Yeah. So to me, I'm hearing stuff from who I thought someone was already super successful who I thought was a very good person of good character from the little that I saw, just judging from a distance and being a fan, right? Mm. Uh, that, was a, that was a mistake on my end. Um, and then I was like, oh man, like, yeah, what he's saying is true. Like, he seems like he, he's really trying to do all these things and, and it, it's Pipey's fault. So then I told him, this is where I fucked up again, was, hey bro, I have a lot of gear. I have a lot of this. I have these skill sets. I know how to build this. I know how to do that. Just let me come in. I'll bring in my gear and which I, you know, I have my office. I was like, I have my own studio, but I'll bring in and I'll take it back and blah, blah, blah to create this content we want to create. And then over time, we'll be able to make some money and then we'll break bread together. We have a bunch of meetings back and forth. Finally, he says, yes. It, it, oh, so real quick. So the thing that he was, his pitch to me was, I don't have money, but I have a big platform. The barracks can help build what you are trying to build he's like we can promote the hyphen it we can promote doubt me we'll put your signs everywhere we'll do this you help us create this content for free pretty much in the beginning and then we'll make money together but i'll help promote you right now and I, to me like i'm a hustler so i'm like bro if i have exposure yeah. to a lot of people mm -hmm. i know how to flip that into profit you know, making more content, do, doing all of my social media shit. And, and now I have like, let's say hypothetically, hundreds of thousands or, you know, potentially millions of people that see some of the things I'm doing on a weekly basis. Bro, my revenue will go up with my merch, my content, my YouTube channels, etc. And he's like, yeah, man, we'll promote it. We'll put your links. Tell me all this shit. To me, that's music to my ears. I'm like, bro, I'm, that's fucking awesome. That's what I want. I care more about the exposure. I don't need money right now. Like I'm, I'm grinding my ass off to do, to pay my bills. I'm good. Yeah. So that was, Which a that, lot of people pay for that. Like what you're getting, what he's offering. Oh, bro. People pay for that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so bro, like, yeah. It. If somebody was like, yo, I can get your your song or your video or this <laughs> and that on our platform. Bro, I'm like, how much you want? Yeah. 500 bucks? 100%. Fuck it. You know, I'll fucking skip a bill to go and pay to get some shit. exposure, yeah. you know, if it, if it makes sense. Yeah. And so, um, and me growing up a big fan, I was like, oh, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. And so that, that, those false, I found out those were false promises, essentially. When it came down to him actually promoting me or doing anything to show me love, zero, bro, zero. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I, he hasn't done... And then he started holding me down. All these things that we had agreed upon, I have, I still have all the documents with what the actual game plan was going to be, how many episodes we were supposed to drop per week on the podcast, on the gaming, um, how I was going to build it out. With his permission, I did... Like, I didn't do anything without his permission. I saw some people comment on my videos, assuming, because they don't know shit, about, uh, you know, and I'm not hating on them. They're just getting a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. But they were like, oh, like, I don't know how you ended up going to make all these things happen without Bear's consent and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's your yeah, fault. I'm like, I'm like bro, that. you think, I'm like, you think <laughs> I'm like literally in the back right there just controlling all the yeah, computers yeah. and shit? Like, no, bro, there's a, there, there's a whole team of like 15, 20 people. Like, no, everyone was on board. 100%. So... And there were there were a couple people. There's a general manager, and then Chase, uh, who was the the main filmer for many years, who just left a, a few months. Chase after, left. Ch Chase left a few months after my video. I didn't even know that. And he was there for 15 years. He, like literally. Do you bro, know why he left? I never asked him, but I was there for so many years, and I don't like to speculate on other people's behalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say this: the barracks would not have lasted as long as it did without him. Facts. Like from all the back back end that I saw. Barra would create all these things like want to do this, want to do that, want to do this. So essentially what he did to me, but to a bunch of other people and even worse with other people too. Damn. But he would say, let's do this, let's do that. I have this deal working on, boom, boom, boom. And then he'd like drop the ball, take off to Chicago, take off to wherever, not answer his phone for like three days, like super MIA all the time. And everybody at the barracks, everybody at the barracks used to say this thing to me when I started seeing these red flags. I was like, bro, what's happening? What's happening? Like, why am I, why, why do I keep getting all this resistance when I have, I'm giving you guys the gold that you guys asked me for um, and more. And they, they would tell me, Bear is really good at starting, but never getting to the finish line. The moment he starts it, he'll maybe run a few yards and then drops it and leaves it there for someone else to pick up or not. Damn. And so Chase was the firefighter for the barracks, essentially. Like he's the one who put out all the fires that Bear pretty much dropped the ball on if it wasn't for chase working as hard as he did and doing going above and beyond his responsibilities i think the barracks would have imploded a long time ago so 
That's real um, shit. Yeah, man. And so he actually stuck uh, um, stuck up for me. He tried to help me out when I was getting all this resistance or this. The thing is, Barra didn't give me resistance like personally. He wasn't like, I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to do that. What he would do, what he would manipulate situations to be like oh i don't have control over this or oh this just happened this family member's sick this friend is going at the hospital this this he would always come up with all these excuses and be like i'll get back to you later i'll get back to you tomorrow turn into a week two weeks three weeks so he would do that to me all the time so the general manager and chase were actually very helpful and trying to like support me in getting in the ecosystem and be able to get things going so I had some support in the inside, and the hype beast dudes actually really liked me, mm-hmm. um, which were technically Bear's bosses. And so, it's uh, I love it, Go bro, ahead. bro. It's, it's it's crazy, bro. Like, so Bear, man. I know I'm bouncing around all over the place because I'm like, but so like, because as I say one thing, I'm like, oh well, this also applies mm-hmm. to this. So it's so much bullshit, that bro. You the, it, know, it's man. wild. So Bear used to put blame on hype beast for the barracks not doing well for th- th- things not happening for deals not going through do you think there was any truth in that or that? Uh, not really because hype beast was in there for money like they were there to make money and if there was a deal or a process that could make money they were for it okay. now there was a process of their legal procedures on brand partnerships or the way money would work but again from my observations they did things the way you're supposed to actually do properly in business Bear was just used to getting it his way on his time the way he wanted to because he was used to being the big man in charge at like, oh, let's just do this. Give me this amount of money and I'll do this and just a lot of handshake deals, which doesn't work for, for a long period of time. So like that skateboarding period. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, but the hype beast dudes all got like, I had a lot of support and Bear used to say this thing to people. Uh, he would say this publicly like online or on live streams or whatever that like he would deflect. He deflects a lot whenever there's something that like, he's supposed to be accountable for or like oh i fucked up on this or i dropped the ball on this or there it's always like pointing fingers it wasn't it's not me i didn't do this it's that person this person no this i'm waiting on them blah 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 blah, blah. so yeah. hype beast uh was like his his big escape goat was anytime something was going right and so he used to say like oh hype beast makes all the decisions i don't right now they own 51 percent, and they, they they are technically his bosses but the dude who actually oversaw the barracks from the hype beast Literally didn't do a damn thing against Barra. Like if Barra was like, I want to do this, I want to do this, everyone was cool. Whatever whatever Barra's so he actually did have like pretty much creative control over everything. Okay. So it was like such bullshit for him to always putting blame. So whenever he would do people dirty on business or whatever, it was always Hypey's fault. But it really wasn't. I saw it. I was around him several times when I heard him on phone calls and I was like, bro, I I know that's you. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? It's so uh, crazy. That's crazy. I got a I got a question, question. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people want it is. I feel like you might know it is. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Was the uh, Battle of the Barracks kind of rigged? Uh, there are definitely aspects of a lot yeah. of the content from the Barracks that's rigged. Yeah. The Battle of the Barracks, though, like the actual contest. I mean, anything with Legion of Doom is fake. Any of the Legion of Doom, whenever like a skater plays against multiple people, yeah. it, essentially that's a gimme. It's a free pass. Yeah, yeah. So they always make it seem like oh like they're battling against these skaters no all that stage. i mean like this, there's theories like i mean i've seen it too i've been there a couple times where like i think it was seller or something like that and they made this thing to redo a trick when he did not have to redo a trick but he's playing against somebody that's actually sponsored by nike or somebody that's so i won't go as far to sit now there are some games that have been closed so there were some games that were open there were some games that were closed so I can't speak on ones I didn't see, okay. and, I, and I don't like to speculate. I don't like to think like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. I don't want to be like, a, cons- I don't want to be a conspiracy mm-hmm. theorist. But I'll say this: there are other pieces of content that I've seen that had to do with games of skate that were a hundred percent rigged. Okay. And I won't say who because it's it would be uh, improper of me to name other people uh, when I have no issues with them. Same so, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, there's there's a lot of fake. There was a lot of fake content on the barracks. For sure. And when I found out, bro, it shattered my heart, bro. Wait, 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 like what content are you talking about specifically? Well, they're just certain content that's like uh, you know, certain like games of skate or certain things that were like first try this or this person versus this person in this type of whatever. I, I, I don't want to give too much because I don't want to I don't want people to figure out the names, but there are definitely pieces of content where there's. It's supposed to be real. It's supposed to be we're filming it and see what it what really happens and really figure out what the, the, the outcome play itself. But no, it's predetermined. Hey, come here. We're this is the outcome. And then if if someone doesn't land the thing that 
on their real attempt, oh, it's okay, do it again, and they edit. So there's a lot of edited bullshit, for sure, that's supposed to be real and natural, and it wasn't. Uh, and, and a lot of it, and, and some people would get taken care of to be like, do did me this ev- favor. Did, did they ever go against, like, YouTube skaters at all? Did they ever look down on that? Just so, YouTube, period. So, like I said, I... I I only created my content, but see, okay, here's one of the interesting things about my deal is I was never a barracks employee. I invested 10 grand of my own money into the studio that we built for the gaming podcast. Repeat that. (laughs) So I invested 10 grand, ended up being a little bit more over a few months as I added a few little things here and there. But initially, uh, it was like 9,700 something. I have the receipts. They're on, if you go watch my videos, there's a link. I don't think people understand what that means though. (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. especially with skateboarding like you really put in your bro, whole effort bro I put bro. my savings up in, yeah, in that shit man. because Bear was like yo man we could do this we're gonna do that this is gonna be this big and we're yeah. gonna put the hyphen it and doubt me everyone and, and we're gonna build this whole ecosystem that's yeah. gonna really show a lot of love and support yeah, and you really trying to help yeah, bro yeah. I, was, yeah. I was like bro I was like I will give I will contribute as much as I can and he was like I, we don't have money to build a studio and this and that I was like okay I'll bring some gear myself, then. and then I was like shit it's gonna be too complicated for me to be taking shit in and out of my studio yeah. I was like you know what fuck it I'll just Build a studio. Like you saw like today, it's proof. I brought my shit over here. He's like, "Yo, I got everything." Yeah, I'll make it easier for you, bro. Like, yo, like I'm like, right on that. let's not yeah. work harder, bro. Let's just work so smarter. Like, let's yo, go. I feel comfortable. I'm loving this. <laughs> so I'm like, "Yo, bro, like, don't worry about the money. I'll yeah. if if we're if we're doing proper business, which I I we didn't. I I thought we would. Um, then I'll get my piece of the pie on the back end, and then I'll get my exposure, which can help sustain me, right? Yeah. And 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 we'll just win together. I'm all about winning together with people. Like I'm not like a like a lot of things I did. There were times in the beginning when I was building out my studio, and then I, I asked them. I was like, "Hey, man, I have a lot of connections already with my tech channel because my tech channel at the time wasn't huge, but it had like twenty thousand subscribers almost, which is good for tech um, channels. So yeah, now it's at like thirty seven. Yeah, um, yeah thirty seven. But at the time, it had like twenty or nineteen. And, but I already had like sponsors from different brands that were willing to send me gear, this and that, do reviews. And so, you know, I already had pe- some stuff in my ecosystem. So I told them, I was like, look, man, for gaming, podcasting, and tech and stuff, I can probably get some brands to kind of send some, to get us some gear and then we'll work something out, you know, and it will give them content. Yeah. He's like, let's do it. If we don't have to spend any money and you can get a bunch of stuff, I'm like, cool. On top of the, I brought in 10 grand of my own money to go and buy. Bro, I literally was the one shopping at the store. I went to IKEA. I went to, bro, I bought stuff off OfferUp, like, you never got to see that studio, but it was it was essentially like a chunk of this studio over there, which I built out, and it took me two months to build out. Crazy. Um, on top of the ten grand, on top yeah. of me getting another ten grand from brand partnership deals that I closed and I did all the work on, and bro, the, the studio was the shit for what it was supposed to be. And so, um, but yeah, when it came down to actually go and execute, the moment he saw that, so people at the barracks would say this too. Once I started bringing up like why is he like holding me back so much or like why is he making excuses because I, I didn't know he was holding me back on purpose yeah i was like but why, why am i not able to get this and then some people at the barracks who work they were to say he likes to be the star if someone That's else crazy. is getting shine or getting a lot of love he does not like it unless there's someone like he looks up to bro there's so many people i, went, <laughs> I came across my skate career doing the same shit it's crazy bro, bro. like it's crabs in a bucket is, bro. like bro if if i'm around like let's say hypothetically you and me yeah. you know did a song or, or an ep or a track or an album or something like that right and let's say like or, or we work on some project that i have more of a influence or, or or cloud on right but you start getting a bunch of love more than me to me first off i'll be happy for you yeah. second we're working together so the more you win by default the more our project or our thing wins together like other people winning helps everyone who's connected win. Yeah. So, like, why would you not want other people they got to do personal well? Personal demons. Oh, you know for sure, bro. To for sure. People, yeah. people wrong and shit. And it's like, yo, you. <laughs> yeah. You're doing other people dirty in the same time. That's <laughs> yeah. crazy. But I also want to ask you, too, what did you like about the barracks? Ah, uh, man. Once I. <sighs> you know that saying of, like, um, you, you, when you like the food, don't see, don't look at how the food is made. Some sh- I'm I'm butchering that, but it's something like you don't want to see how how your food is made. That sounds scary as hell. Right? Yeah, <laughs> bro, it's, it's facts, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, in healthier options. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's like when there's something you really food. like, and then you see the behind the scenes, you're like, oh, this is actually not good for me. This is not healthy. Mm-hmm. This is not an environment I want to be a part of. Yeah. So, uh, the my favorite thing about it was just skateboarding. Like that, at the end of it, that place, everyone 
I don't want to say everyone because then almost everyone, almost everyone, there, there's some solid people, very, very small amount of solid people, but almost everyone there, bro, was like fucking hated their job, hated Barra, fucking just slacked off didn't give a fuck they were like and they all talked shit amongst each other and then they were always toxic bro Mm -hmm. toxic that's the perfect word it was such a toxic environment where people were always trying to like undercut people take advantage or you know get and i was like bro trust in this building bro bro, when i brought my boys in for this deal that that they ended up kind of having us do for caffeine and uh they hired me as the director and i was able to bring my own team in i told my team yo be cool with everybody be friendly with everybody do not be friends with everybody. Man. These people are snakes. They fucking snakes. So just be nice and respectful, cordial. But no, so go. But Let's don't be trusting and don't give it don't give any personal information about anything in your life or whatever. Yeah. And sure enough, bro, I told them that and I was all, bro, like my team, not only me, but my team, fucking uh, hard workers, great work ethic, always delivered. We didn't drop the ball on a damn thing, bro. And we like literally saved the barracks ass in so many of their other employees that were involved on some of these productions. When they didn't do their part, we came and saved them because our name was still attached and we, it was important to us to be able to deliver. And then they fucking snaked us out. They did some grimy shit and then they like literally try to like smear us and saying that we were hard to work with. And it's not like, bro, like we're literally the, the reason why you got this damn near almost half a mil deal. Like it's crazy, bro. It's crazy how they snaked us, said bullshit. Bro, I have bro, I have audio recordings, video recordings. Uh, I got screenshots. I got every message I've ever interacted with Barra, text message, emails, all the plans I've made. I have so much fucking proof of like these people doing doing me dirty and and like I have phone calls that I've recorded. I can't put them out publicly because that'd be illegal yeah. without them knowing. Yeah. Um but you got it. Uh, but but I have them yeah. and so I can show them to people off camera and not publicly. But uh Bro, like literally where there was one time I addressed one of the dudes who like ended up snaking me and I found out he snaked me after and I was like, hey, bro, like why, why did you guys fucking, you know, get us kicked off these shows and we we're doing this and this and that. I was like, and I, I, I literally listed out everything that we did, right? That we saved them. We were on time. We didn't drop the ball. We were professional, blah, 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 blah. I, I listed out everything that it wasn't an ego boosting, but I listed these things out. So that way, if he felt that I was bullshitting or that there's there were lies in with the, within whatever I was saying, he could dispute it and be like, oh no, you you guys were difficult, blah, blah. And so I gave him the opportunity to dispute. After I gave this whole list of how great we did work, he's like, well, I can't dispute anything you're saying. I can't say you're wrong, but it's just a call I had to make. I had to get you get rid of you guys. So it was clear that it was like, oh, so you know, Nigga, so, <laughs> so factually, there is literally nothing you can complain about me. Hey. You just wanted our spots. It's crazy, bro. So when you called him out, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take for you to do that? Like, what made you? So there you were a couple things. So, so uh, let me see. Let me pull up some messages. I have a Bobera. Let me get this proper. The hell the hell? I can get show you too, so you can confirm that I'm not lying. I'm not gonna show the. Uh, Minutes, yeah, I'll talk like 10 more minutes. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll go in uh, 1.5 times speed. (laughs) Uh, let's see, let me pull up Barra. I just want to make I'm not gonna like read what he wrote and stuff like that because I don't want to get all crazy with it, but but I'll just tell you some of the things that were like so when 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 I got snaked, I got snaked several times, got left hanging, got done dirty in many ways. Go watch my videos, it's in full detail, description, and (laughs) and every time. I took those hits on the chin like a champ. I was like, fuck it. I just kept walking. Yeah. I just I just left it because I was like, I'm not, I don't want to make it all complicated. I'm trying to do other things in my life. I'm trying to be, you know, build my thing. And like the last thing I want to do is be in this like back and forth. So I, I pretty much took these things as, as L's. And like it bothered me because I was like, man, what a bitch I was for not standing up for myself. Like I, I did send bare emails that I felt like taking advantage of whatever, but like I handled it like so professional that I felt like a fucking bitch. And so I was like, but whatever. I feel you in the ass a lot of times. But, but, but it's like, I, but I, I try, but it's not even that like I, the reason for me being a little bitch about it was because I wanted to be professional and that way, like my business is solid. That there's nobody that can say, oh, you're doing this because of that, or you're saying that because of this. So when I approached them and said, yo, this is unfair, you guys can't just kick us off, I feel like we should, we should be able to work something out. Either it's you, me and my team on, because my team was expecting this money from these other shows yeah. we're supposed to do. Yeah. 
Either you let us finish out this season in this agreement that we have, or you buy us out if you really want us out and you give us a, a maybe, a, and I just threw out hypotheticals. I was like, I don't know. I'm open to discussing how we can do this amicably. So I'm like, maybe buy us out, pay half or whatever. I'm open to your suggestions. Okay, well, let's, ha now, every time I had some type of situation, I always dealt with the general manager because Barra would never answer my calls. Anytime there was some issue with Barra, bro, I would call him <laughs> and I would text him, hey, Hey, yo, like call me, blah, blah, blah. Never got back to me. So all these things that I'm saying that I'm kind of dealing with. And the general manager was super dope and helpful. He was just doing what his boss said. So he's like, oh man, I don't know if there's anything we can do. I don't th you know what? Unfortunately, like these things happen in skateboarding. And it's pretty much saying, like, bro, like, yeah, bro, people get done dirty all the time, get kicked to the curb and get left, hang like get fucked over. And it is what it is. That's how it goes. And I'm like, so then I said, I was like, bro, like, honestly, I think the only reason that this is, Skateboarding and this happens in skateboarding so often is because skateboarders don't know That they can actually stand up for themselves legally and then reason why I made this podcast Yeah, there's <laughs> a, a lot of reason why I made this podcast, bro. It's a lot of things that people aren't saying but Yeah, we, we could get there. We can get yeah, there. Yeah. Keep continuing the shit. So then I'm like, I'm like look man I, I have a bunch of agreements with you guys on email. Yeah, like I don't want to go to court or make it anything complicated I just want to do what's fair like we had an agreement Let's just honor that agreement or find a Respectful way for both of us to, to agree on to, to end it. Yeah. He's like, oh, but we never did a contract. And so the first things that Barrow did me dirty on for the first two years, first year and a half, I fucked up because I didn't have things in writing. I would write a bunch of things for him, the 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 business plan or the this, or the these blueprints, and, and I would send him things, but I never had him send me things. Mm. So I fucked up by not having anything in writing. On top of like a contract is the number one thing. Yeah. But if you don't have a contract, at least if you have back and forth agreements. That verbal shit. Uh, well, verbal, like just voice doesn't work, but text yeah. or, or, or writing mm. can hold up, especially if you have it on an email that has like a technically a government timestamp. Yeah. So take notes <laughs> so i so i fucked up on all my first things the podcast the tech the the all these things that he promised me and i didn't get that, that's my bad i fucked up i yeah. did bad business i yeah. didn't protect myself but here with this deal we didn't do a contract but i made sure every single conversation we had building up to that deal email 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 every time we finished a conversation about whatever the game plan was or how much they were going to pay me my team blah 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 email 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 so i had confirmations so then I was like, oh, well, we didn't do a contract, but I got emails with everything we agreed upon and the shows and how many shows and the this and that. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, but I don't think that'll hold up in court. And I'm like, no, it will. I, I know for That's a fact it will. even say. <laughs> bro, but yeah, like, right? I was like, bro, like, so you're already, like, shutting me down when you know that you guys are fucking me over. But I was, like, trying to keep it cool. Like, no, it'll hold up, but I don't want to go that direction. I'm not trying to take you guys to court. Like, I just want to be treated fair and my team to not get fucked over. It's not just me now. It's two of my dudes that I brought in and now they're left hanging. And so, oh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll see what we can do. Long story short, nothing. So then we kind of ended up settling and it was like a cheap ass settle, bro. Like they just gave me this laptop and and I just like, you know what? Fuck it. It's better than nothing. Okay. And I was like, it was like a $3,000 laptop. By then it was already used. So it was like fucking valued at probably like $1,800. But it was, it was whatever, bro. But I was like, you know what? At least I'm not taking a zero, you know? And I was still pissed, but whatever. I let it be. And then that, night i believe it was or the night after i have, I have the text message so i could pull it if i wanted to but uh essentially i start hearing from various people actually and throughout months uh that bear is telling calling people or hitting people up or whatever don't work with me that i'm a shady dude mm -hmm. just because i was trying to tell them like yo like you guys are being unfair to me yeah. i could take you guys to court if yeah. you guys want to but i don't want to let's find a way i was trying to be cool and he's like trying to tell people he's already trying to like sh smear me oh and I have this on recording. I have the phone calls. When I told them about, the evidence. Or not that part, not with him, but with uh, uh, with before with uh, two of his guys, general manager and one of the other dudes that snaked me. Yeah. Um, when I told them about, yo, like I can take you to court if I, if you guys really want to, but I don't want to. They were like, oh well, um, this industry is pretty small. You you know stuff like this gets around, and there's uh, a reason why it's small. No, but, 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 like, but yeah, they yeah. literally threatened me. They say <laughs> they they threatened to blackmail me. Essentially, they're like, you know, the last thing you want is for people in this industry not to want to work with you. That's not the last thing I want because y'all not paying me. All right, let me stop. Right, right. <laughs> no, but, but, right. Yeah. So that's them trying to threaten yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, and I, I told you. them, yeah. and I was like, bro, I don't really make any money from skateboarding. So it's, it, so I'm yeah. like, bro, it's incons inconsequential to me. I don't care. Like, I'm not trying to do anything shady. I'm just trying to work something out with you guys. I put all these years in and all this time and I've been like 
left hanging so many times. It's very mm. unfair. Yeah. Oh, and they had at that same time told me too, like, oh, like, hey, we need you to clear out your studio because we're going to use that studio for something else. So they already had like axed all my shows or all the other things that potentially we would get to. So mm. I was like, oh, what the fuck? So I was like, all right. So then Bear goes and tries to smear my name. He's telling people that I'm shady, which is far from the truth, you know? And so I'm like, fuck I that. And so I literally text him because I'm trying to keep it cool. I'm not trying to like do anything publicly. I'm, and so I say, I'm like, um, let me see. Where the fuck is it? Okay. Oh, give me a second. Uh, you still got a drink? You drank that oh, shit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little cheers today. Cheers. So on September 14th, 2022, I start hearing other people telling me that he's telling them to not work with me so i i text him because again i'm like straight up if i got an issue with something i'm gonna hit you up so i said i called him no answer that's my first thing i first call people because i like, I don't want to do text messages but all right fine you don't want to answer i'll text you yeah. hey man i've been trying to keep things professional and cordial but i don't appreciate you contacting people and smearing my name with false information i don't mind filing a defamation lawsuit if that continues there's no need to slander if things don't work out yeah. and then he just wrote like four or five hours later not sure what you're talking about and that, at that point, I was like, all right, fuck that. And I blocked everybody from the barracks pretty much, yeah. except for Chase. Um, and then, um, so that annoyed me. And then over time, and now I left like that week or the week after, right? I got all my stuff, took all, all my stuff, and then, you know, mm-hmm. went my separate ways. And I took it again as another hit on the chin as an L. It is what it is. I had some uh, more people tell me that they would. Well, I guess when they would talk to Bear and ask about me, because, you know, I didn't I didn't leave a big footprint in the barracks. Like they they restricted my podcast. I know the podcast would have been big, but they didn't let that happen. They only let the barracks gaming. And then that at first was once every week, which originally was supposed to be two or three times a week. And then they made it one week and then they made it every two weeks. And then on occasion, it would miss three weeks. So it's very inconsistent. So like and then I had some productions like the the Halloween, the barracks game, I mean, the barracks uh, Christmas, things like that. So some people knew of me. Some people followed me. You know, I gained yeah. some, some, yeah, 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 a little, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Nowhere near what I should have because they didn't promote me on any other things that they said they would. Mm. Barrow said he would, and so, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. It is what it is. But then I saw in 2023, he was trying to take all the. He was trying to deflect and put all the blame on everything that's been shitty with the barracks for the last several years on hype beast. Finally, we are owning this shit. Oh, this and snap. While at the same time hearing multiple times that he was saying bullshit about me. Like he was telling, dude, I don't want to say what he told certain dudes because then I don't want those people to get outed. Yeah. But he said certain things about me that were f- f- completely untrue. Yeah. Um, work ethic, my behavior, the way I behaved with women, like just different things. I was like, what the fuck, bro? Like, I, why, why did I get along with everybody and I never acted improper, especially in a place where I'm like, I'm trying to build my name up. Like, I'm not going to do stupid shit. And nowhere else do I hear these things. So, like, it's very clear that this is bullshit. And the thing is, the people he told things to, I built good rapport with them. So they told me, they're like, yo, That's bro. Crazy. And they knew he was full of shit. They're like, oh, I know he's just saying some shit to just make you not get business with us, but I'm just letting you know. If they actually thought I was shady, they probably wouldn't tell me, right? Mm. So, um, then, so I'm hearing things from people, which is annoying because he's slandering me. And then he's going and trying to paint himself as the savior. Skateboarding's the barracks savior because now we're going to be fully back in charge again and blah, 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 blah. And to me, it was like, you're full of shit, bro. All the bullshit that was happening the last several years in the barracks was not hype beast. It was really all Bear's fault. Like, maybe a few little things here and there, but 99.9% was Barra fucking up. So, I was really annoyed on top of hearing fake shit about me. So, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a video just putting this out. And the reason I did my first video, which it's a series of like three videos. But the first video, the reason I did it was for the people that would say that they heard things about me that were fake. I, or th- that I knew were fake, but they heard things. I was like, here's a link. This is really what happened. So I made the first video. I didn't post it up on any of my social media. Oh, for Instagram, real? TikTok, Facebook, nothing. I literally just uploaded to YouTube. Didn't make a anything, nothing. Nobody knew about it. I didn't even tell. I only told like a couple close friends. Didn't tell them to share it. Didn't tell any of my skating friends. Mm. Um, you know what? Actually, I did. You know what? I, there are a few people. I did tell Garrett Jenner, and I, but, but I didn't tell them to share it. I just I told a couple people. Yeah. yeah. So scratch that. My bad. There were a few people I shared it with, but it was never of like, hey man, share this, or hey, look what I just posted. 
it was super low key, nothing on social media, right? And it had like fucking 20 views, 30 views, because my main, the hyphenate channel hasn't been my main channel for many years, so it's kind of been dead forever. Okay. So, but that's where I put it. And uh, over like two, three days, it started gaining traction on its own, organically, without me doing a single post or telling anybody to share it. And then it just went. And yeah. and then, uh, yeah, bro, I mean, that shit like, got picked up by all the, the everything and people were sharing it over. And then I was, I, sh I don't know if I can say this part because I, don't, I, I know I can because fuck this person who fucking, <laughs> fuck this person who set me up. I had a friend, had a friend that was really close to Barra yeah. and me and this person would go eat. And this person to me, I thought was a really good human being. And so, I was like, no matter what, at the barracks, like you and me will stay friends. I don't care how close you are to Bear. If you always treat me with respect, you don't. I, I, it's okay if you are friends with him, so long as you don't share anything back and forth. Like, we could be cool. So we were going to go eat. We went to go eat, and I didn't have any plans to talk about Bear whatsoever. There was no talk about Bear because it was like did not set you up, did he? I got set up. This nigga. Barra shows up. <laughs> Bro, this, well, so there's a, for those who haven't seen it, there's a second video. There's a follow up video like maybe four or five days after my first video. Mm. And I talk about the ambush. Barra mm. pulled up on me in this restaurant without me knowing. And I was like, uh -huh. what the fuck? And so at first, I was like, I turned and I was like, I was like, my body language got very uh, defensive. And, and as soon as he saw me, he was like, hey, 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 I, I'm just, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. Cause I was, I thought that something was about to go down, so I was like ready. Yeah, nigga, I'll be confused too. I'm like, hold on, nigga. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> and so, so he was like, oh, Shit I just want to talk. I just want to talk. And then you guys go watch that video. That video is long. That that video, I break down damn near everything that was said. Link in the description. Yeah, minutes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he set me. He, he uh, I got set up, and then this dude literally tried buying me off. He's like, how much money do you want to take down the video? I was like, bro. I didn't make the video to, for money. Like, I'm not asking you for money. Bro, I haven't had any contact with you. I made that video to defend myself. That's crazy. But you tried to buy me off. And, <laughs> and, and, and again, that goes to show the reason he tried buying me off is because he knew it was factual. Like, if I was making anything up, yeah. it's a, easy to do a defamation lawsuit at that scale, at that level of what I said. Yeah. But I have all the receipts. I got yeah. emails, text messages, screenshots, video recordings in my studio. I had a ring cam in my studio at the barracks because all that gear was mine. Mm. They ended up doing me dirty. It goes more detail in my first video, but they never paid me, so I ended up owning all the gear. Right? So, because originally it was supposed, I was supposed to get paid for that gear that I invested yeah, yeah, money into, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I ended up owning it, right? Yeah. So, because I owned it and I didn't want anybody fucking up with my sh fucking up my studio, I left a ring cam and everyone knew about it. Yeah. The general manager, the bookkeeper, it wasn't, it wasn't a it wasn't yeah. it was right yeah. in front. Okay. But Barra's dumbass didn't fucking realize I had a fucking ring cam in there. And so this dude would like always parade my studio to all his celebrity friends or his rich friends or his whatever friends. I don't know who the fuck. But every, and I would, bro, I'm watching it live. This guy comes in, so look at the studio, we're gonna do this. We're, and always brag about the, the podcast, the gaming, the this. Never once mentioned me in any of those conversations with any of those people. They didn't bring up my name, didn't say that I was, con you know, whatever. Just said, we, the Bears, are doing this. And so that used to annoy me because I'm like, bro, like you, that's when I started seeing like, oh, this dude's fucking like a, um, a parasite. He just like fucking feeds off of other people, bro. And so there's one, one of them that that I recorded, uh, that that I screen recorded on my phone while it, like right after it happened. I went back. I was like, I gotta save this shit for sure above all the other recordings. Um, so I, I know exactly who these people are, but I'm not. I won't say their name. So he's showing the studio. He walks them in, and they're like, Oh my god, this is amazing. This is awesome. Now there there's a third video that I put out when. I found out Bear was using a burner account to troll me. Mm. And I caught him and I found out how exactly the... So go watch that video. It, it'll blow your mind if you haven't seen it. Uh, bro, it's fucking gold. Link in the description. It's gold, <laughs> bro, finding this dude trolling with a burner account on YouTube. This dumbass used a burner account and commented as himself on the Barracks comments. And then when I called it out, deleted him so it was clear it was him <laughs> because a real troll wouldn't have deleted him. Fucking dumbass. That's crazy. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> fucking guy, bro. It's so funny. Sometimes it's comic. I was like, bro, how is this not like a cartoon or some shit? This should be like on Family Guy. That's how I um, my life. So this dude's parading the room. They're like, wow, this is amazing. This is so cool. My first rap name wasn't just a hyphenate. It was like this long ass. It was Joe E, the mastermind hyphenate. J-O dash capital E. So when he first met me, he met me with that long ass name and would just call me Joe for short. Now, my real name is actually Joey. So okay. no one calls me Joe ever. 
this is how I found out the burner account and other things like on text messages I have and there I have screen recordings of my text messages on my videos if you go if you go to the links of the dis I, I, the pinned comment I have a link that shows more proof than the video show it's like a, it's an, a whole like unlisted page on my website that's called that, that, that you'll see it has everything so he would call me Joe nobody ever else called me Joe so in this video, he says, oh, yeah, some guy Joe built it. Like, very demeaning. Oh, some guy Joe built it. And then they're like, they, you know, they think Bear is like fucking so well connected. Like, Joe Rogan? And he's like, That's crazy. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, no, no, this guy, this is when Bear is at the peak of telling me that he's going to help ex get me exposure and promote me and get me in the ecosystem, right? Yeah. He's supposedly trying to help me. And he goes, yeah, no, this guy Joe, he's always trying to inject himself into everything. Bro. Every single aspect of that studio I paid for. Every piece of equipment, the, the fucking furniture. Bro, like damn near most of the setup in here was from there. That TV, that whole setup over there with the, you know, um, these panels. Bro, all that shit, bro, was over there, right? And so I paid for every, I paid for, I, I even had a giant barrack sign made. I paid for it. I paid for everything to show love to the barracks, the Dalmi, yeah. and I had like all this like Nintendo PlayStation, all these dope posters and stuff, right? I had a Dalmi poster, deservedly so. I fucking paid for the studio and I did all this work and I built it for two months. I had a, one Dalmi poster and he goes, yeah, um, I let him put this sign up. <laughs> no. Motherfucker, I paid for everything <laughs> in this bitch, bro. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, so just just so people know why we're on one angle now is uh, one of the cameras. This ain't the professional podcast, nigga. This is nah, a beautiful just... day podcast, nigga. Niggas be fucking up. Nah, that it's shit. all it's all good though. But uh, I, I talk a lot too, man. That's like that's like uh, the hard part about me being a guest is like I just keep going. That's so what podcast work. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, bro. Hey, man. Thank you for for having me on, man, and course, and bro. and talking and and just I want to say one thing too, man. Is I have like my, my friends that know all the things that I know tell me all the time, bro, make a bunch of content, expose a lot of this stuff. That's not the energy I want to put out with my brand or my content. And it's not to knock people that do that stuff, but like I'm trying to just create inspirational, motivational and entertainment. I like, I like some dumb shit. I gotta do some ratchet songs and stuff like that. But overall, like a lot of my content, I want it to just be something that uh, uplifts or just entertains on yeah. some dumb shit. But I don't like the drama shit. You don't like, want to build your name off the drama shit. Exactly. I get yeah. that 100%. So on my content, I don't want to create that stuff. But if you're interviewing me or anybody else, like I'll talk about stuff all day. I'm an open 100%. book. I'm I not like, I don't think it's it's whack to talk about it. So I'm just talking about it. You're asking if some like people I are interested. Said, great. And uh, yeah, man, like I'm an open book. So I got nothing to hide. And I'll call out my own faults and my own mistakes. One of the issues that, so when Barra ambushed me and tried to buy me off, I told him, I don't want money, bro. Which, stupidly, I should have said, give me some fucking money. <laughs> right? But, but no, no, I'm just kidding. My, my, my no, morals yeah, were a little bit more. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My, my morals were more important to me than the money. But I told him. I mean, but that is a business thing, too. You should have yeah. said that in the beginning. Well, so, so then I told too. him, I was like, hey, man, I don't want your money. I didn't come to you to ask for money. I put up this video myself, and you showed up here. You're offering me money. I don't want your money. I didn't mm. do it for money. And so he's like, well, how can we make this right? I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get on a podcast together. If you feel anything I said was incorrect, inaccurate, or bullshit, then you can address all of my points and we can have a conversation back and forth. Mm. And if there is something I'm wrong, the audience can see and they can hold me accountable, but they can also hold you accountable. And if you really are intent on making things right, as a mature adult who's willing to take accountability then you can say the parts that you made a mistake on or you didn't do properly or whatever and then we can make this right as men as or i mean not men it's per se but just as adults yeah, mature as adults right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah as yeah. a grown-ass man like like come on oh no you think i want to give you more exposure you, your video right now is getting all these views because you're baiting off our name and you want me to go and be in your podcast all right, let me say this real quick how the, how the fuck up how the fuck up <laughs> Skateboard ain't get that many fucking views. <laughs> like, you got views, but it's not really nothing like that to fucking brag about. God motherfucking damn. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, the, the ego that he has, bro, is insane. And I mean, I could get his point of view a little bit, but it's also like, I ain't gonna get into it. Yeah. But, 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 but like, to me, it's like, if you want to make things right, if you're a grown ass man, let it be right. Yeah, and I mean, and there's nothing wrong with people knowing that you fucked up on something. I should, yeah. And so he was just like, no, no. And I, so we had this whole back and forth. You can watch that whole video. The fucking the video is kind of entertaining, to be honest, because I kind of like I I've been around him a lot. So I imitate him, you know, at, like the conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing him and I'm playing me in, the, in this vi recap video. But uh, and it's all factual. Everything I said there is 100 percent truth. So 
there's one point and it's in the video uh he goes bro his fucking narcissistic ego is so insane he goes how about this how about we take a picture together and i post it up and i have my thumbs up you have your thumbs up and, and then we write in the caption it's all good and I, bro i'm like that uh-huh I'm, I'm thinking like there's way more to it if you would have did that shit i'd have been dying okay go ahead. Bro, <laughs> go ahead. bro how fucking ridiculous is that you fucked up you're trying to save face for the truth of your mistakes you're coming to me asking me how we can make things right and your solution is for me to take a picture with you and you post it up saying it's all it's all good that doesn't benefit that benefits you you need me in your photo i don't need you in my photo i'm just fine right now <laughs> you a photo with me makes you look good you should be asking me to take a photo with you like dumbass <laughs> fucking dumbass bro fucking moron it's just such Damn, a dumbass thing to man. say bro no i get it like why would you so i was like bro that doesn't benefit me at all i don't i was like bro i i don't even know why you're here and so we had this back and forth and i told him look man i'm gonna leave because this is bullshit. And it lasted like almost an hour, bro. And I was trying to be cool. Like, I didn't want to be confrontational. I didn't want to have to get aggressive or nothing. So I was just like, look, bro, like, I'm going to leave. I told you how we could do, make things right, which to him, what an idiot, bro. Free. Free. And he could have actually made himself look better. I actually gave him grade A publicist advice. Like, him doing a video with me and admitting to his faults would make him look incredibly good to so many people. And that would probably open up a lot of doors for him as a human and as a businessman. So I gave him the opportunity to fucking win and me not get anything to win. Like, it doesn't, it wouldn't benefit me, but it just, at least for me, it was like, okay, make it right by apologizing and making things right. But I wouldn't benefit at all from it. And uh, he could have taken that opportunity and didn't. And so then I was like, all right, bro, like, I gave you an option and you're giving me an option. I don't like your option. I don't want a photo with you. I don't like your option. And I don't want your money. So let's just meet tomorrow and we'll have and i'll present some options you present some options and we'll see if there's one that works now obviously this conversation means i gotta take down the video if there is an agreement right but that means he has to make it right somehow the next day we're supposed to have the meeting he cancels and then ask me what my demands are now there's a part i don't know should i read all this i didn't say this in my video this is uh how much time we got on there like an old ass nigga doing this right now <laughs> <laughs> Minutes. We could. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We good. All right. So he cancels on me, right? Mm -hmm. Let me pull up this message, bro. And so I'm updating people on YouTube about this whole situation, right? I got ambushed. Uh, he wants to have a meeting uh, to see what we can work out. Granted, that means the video might get taken down. And I have so many people showing me support in this time frame. So many people. Not only on comments, bro, somebody like pro skateboarders, iconic skateboarders, bro, hit me up and were like, yo, I love what you're doing. Thank you for standing up, blah, 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 blah. And I had, bro, like big names tell me like, I love what you're doing. I can't publicly support you because I have teammates that are affiliated with this sponsor and he's yeah, affiliated. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I can't, but you're doing dope shit, bro. I had so many people that are like in his circles that are How like, How big? <sighs> like, like people that the big skaters look up to. Damn. And, and the the current big skaters too, like people were like so, showing so much, bro. Then I ended up getting dozens and dozens. Like, see, that's what pisses me off. Like, y'all over here behind the scenes saying this shit, but y'all can't. You know what? Yeah, say, yeah. It, it kind of does <laughs> suck at some extent, right? Like, like, oh well, fuck, man. Just like show some love online. But at the same time, I'm not someone who actually believes that anyone owes me anything. So it's fine. It's all right. It, I I shouldn't have the expectation that people should come to my defense. So it's, it's whatever. But but it would be nice. It would be nice if people were like. Here's my story. Here's my story. And, and he again. got Harvey Weinstein. Like, bro, like, I mean, obviously not on some sexual shit because I don't I don't think he has any reports on that. But you get what I'm saying, though, right? Like, everyone's too, a lot of people are like too afraid to say shit. But it's like, bro, like, he's been doing so many people dirty for so many years. And so after my videos went out, bro, I got flooded with ex coworkers, friends of his, like people in his networks, teammates of like, he did this, he did that, he did this. It's crazy, bro. That's but anyway, crazy. so the next day we're supposed to meet and he's supposed to present some options. I'm supposed to present some options. He texts me and cancels and he goes like, after what I thought to be leaving in somewhat good terms yesterday with a handshake and a desire to fix it and sincerely fix it and resolve how you're feeling. Here's another grade A narcissist thing that he does is doesn't take accountability. 
he'll do this thing, is which is deflecting narcissist. I'm sorry you feel this way. I'm sorry that you felt this way about this thing. It's like, bro, like you're not taking any accountability for what you did. Insane. Mm-hmm. So then he goes in the text to resolve how you're feeling. I was surprised at your breaking news, which I, I put this comment explaining that I got ambushed, right? Um, but it was very like short. Yeah. Um, he's like, uh, fuck. Uh, with what I said, my main objective was really just to talk it out with you as I always think it's best face to face and to get a point to whereupon you feel better. I apologized to you yesterday and meant it. He really didn't. And he said he apologized to me and I told him like, bro, you didn't apologize. He said, you're sorry for how I feel. And after that, he was like, oh, well, I'm sorry. So fucking fake. Sometimes things fall through and plans don't happen the way they're envisioned. Maybe I'm a little more used to it. I'm not sure. I can't promise I can meet your demands of what you want. What demands, bro? I never demanded a damn thing. Um, demands of what you want, but I can just tell you that I'm open to hear it and with a sincere heart would like for you to feel better. So I'll do what I can. Again, I think it's best if you just text me what you're thinking instead of meeting up in person so nothing can be mi- mis- <clears throat> so nothing can be misconstrued or depicted in a way that's biased to the other to the way the other side feels. Thanks. Fucking didn't want to show up. What a buster. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Bro, skate, right, y'all skate get, niggas really. I mean, I'm a skate nigga too, I guess. But yeah, yo, everybody so, be on some. So I was a little annoyed, shit, huh? and so then I was like, so I contem- I thought about it for a little bit, and I was like, okay. And I so I saw a bunch of people in the comments saying, su- supporting the fact that Bear is trying to make a deal with me. They're saying, get your money, bro. You they owe you. Get your money. Da da da. So I was like thinking like, okay, because I, I was contemplating like, because he offered money, and my instinct was like, no, I don't. I didn't do it for money. But then. After I saw comments of like, get your money, get your money. I was like, is it immoral for me to take money and take the video down? Or is it justified because I do deserve to be compensated for all this fuckery? And so I was, I had like this dilemma and I couldn't figure out like what was the proper thing for me to do. Having money would be nice, but it's like not all that matters. And so I was like, I was torn. So... But I did think about the comments of the people that were in support of me getting my money. So I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe it is okay. So this is what I wrote to him. I put, here's the one and only option I have for us to squash all of this and have me take down the video. Two things in this process. Number one, now I pulled from his narcissistic idea of let's take a picture together, thumbs up. I pulled from that because I thought it was funny, but in a way where it's like beneficial to me. I'm like, number one, We do a video together, not a photo. When we meet again in person, in the video, you say the following, and I wrote it in quotes. I'm sorry to the hyphenate for not delivering on our original deal, for dropping the ball on our business, and for not making this right sooner, end quotes. After you say those words, we hug it out. Oh, because he had said the day before, we we do the thumbs up and hug it out. So I put, we hug it out. The video gets posted on both our social media platforms and stays live indefinitely. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. In the caption we write, it's all good. And tag the hyphenate Doubt Me Barracks. So again, pulling inspiration from that. Now there's two things, right? So here's number two. You pay me $80,000 via check or $60,000 cash. You bring me the payment in person and we film our video. After the, now the reason I did $80,000 and $60,000, $80,000 cash, I mean, $80,000 check, I would lose with taxes about 20 grand. So for me, it was like 60 grand either way. And 60 grand cash, I wouldn't have to report it. So then I wouldn't lose any money. So that's why I said those numbers. After the check is cleared or cash is received, we each have 12 hours to post up the video to our social media sites. The video from my YouTube channel will be taken down within the first hour that our video is posted on all mentioned social media platforms and will not be uploaded to any of my other platforms ever again. If you don't agree to those terms, please do not bother contacting me ever again. Any further communication that does not move this deal forward will be ignored. Thank you. So then he goes, what is this $80,000 based on? And essentially, I break down what was in my first video. Time, labor, investment of me and my team. Uh, my boy Amari, who helped me build out the studio for two months, all for free. Um, the you know the, the the money of that I spent, the 
time of my gear being in that studio that I couldn't use in any other of my productions mm -hmm. because it's only there. And then the we, all the exposure that was promised to me that would have helped me gain financially that I didn't get, like the podcast or the promoting Doubt Me This or the hyphen at that. So I break all this down in a very logical way that it's not just me being greedy. And then I put $80,000 for two and a half years is more than fair for everything that was promised to me that didn't happen. And he's like, can you send me the agreement contract so I can look it over? I can't seem to find it in my emails or files just so I have a better idea of the metric. And I've said this from the beginning and I said it in my video prior to him ambushing me. We didn't do contracts and that's where I fucked up. It was all handshake deals. So what contract fool? Like there's no contract, obviously. What the fuck? So um, I was like, I just put, I'm not doing any of that. Let me know if you agree to the terms and we can move forward. I'm not going to respond to anything else except for you agreeing to today's option. Thank you. And then he's like, I'm not sure where you think the money's going to come from. We don't have that kind of money. Now, I don't want to get into too much personal financial information yeah. on people, but I'll say this. The barracks had been, the entire time I was there, bleeding, broke as fuck, borrowing money from a lot of people Damn. just to pay rent every month. Yeah. The monthly rent on just the location was about 50 grand. It was expensive. And then plus their overhead, their employees, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's an insane amount of money. They, they, they were, and they didn't have enough business coming in with big enough brand partnership deals to be able to sustain it. So they were always on the verge of getting kicked out of that warehouse. I understood that. Now, I, I won't say how, but I'll say that people who are connected with the... Ah, yeah, I don't even want to say that because I want—I don't want to—I don't want people to figure out who. But I'll say this: I'm very aware of his financial records, of the money he makes from the barracks and the hype beast deal. This dude was making like several hundreds of several hundreds of thousands of dollars per year while the barracks was bleeding. So Barrow was making mad money, bro, and I, and I know the exact like. Some of the exact deals. No, for a fact. For a fact. For a, for for a, a, fact, for a fact. fact, fact. Yeah, like I've I've seen stuff. I've been told by the people who are connected. Seen it, bro. It's insane. It's insane. Uh -huh. So <laughs> I know I know how much money he was in banking. Even though the barracks was bleeding, now Bear did, did, didn't want to put his own money into the barracks. So the barracks was bleeding as a company. But Bear Bear in most companies, especially at, you know at that level, essentially the owners or, or co-founders or whoever, they get paid as an employee at some level, right? Okay. So he's getting money in no matter what for Steve Barra. But the barracks money, if it's doing good or bad, it's barracks. So it's separated. So th mm. that can fail and it won't uh, fuck with his money. So when he wrote that, I'm like, I don't know where you think we're going to get this money from. I knew the barracks didn't have money and that's an impractical number to even throw out. But... I was like, bro, I know for a fact you got way more money, and th that actually won't be that much for you, to be honest. Mm. Um, and so I almost wrote that to him and told him, like, bro, like, I know parts of your deal that of like, I know how much money you're getting, yeah, salary yeah. and this, and the credit cards and the this, and the, all these things that are taken care of, not by you. So, um, but I was like, you know what? Fuck that, bro. Like, I don't even really care about the money anyway. It was just because, like, he offered it, and I thought, like, okay, maybe we'll do it. Okay. So then I just wrote, then we don't have any agreement. Take care. Now, I don't know for a fact, but I am I feel like he was potentially thinking about some type of counter to me, right? Because his whole thing is, and he even said this to me in person, like, 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 it's how does he not see that he's so egotistical? He told me when he ambushed me, he said, I don't like people thinking bad about me. Like, not... I need to be make things right or mm -hmm. or oh I messed up and I need to take ownership. Nothing about any maturity, nothing about being a grown adult who takes accountability. All his thing is I don't like people thinking bad about me. Bro, here's an easy solution. Don't do bad shit, dumbass. Bro, like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> uh shit, I got a question there. Yeah. If he gave you that eighty thousand, how would you feel about him? Same. The the money, bro. The, the 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 if if I if he would have given me the money and I would have taken it, the money has nothing to do with me. But would you think, respect if he was just like, yeah? No, like, not at you. all. Uh -huh. Because that was the the re, see the thing is like I didn't approach him for money. He approached me to offer me money okay. because it was it he essentially I again. I'm not saying he did anything sexual at all, but he's like a Harvey Weinstein type of person, right? With like a I'll buy you out to keep you quiet, mm -hmm. right? And so. 
I didn't fully think about it like that at the time, but now looking back, it's like, oh, he's not doing it because he has now a moral compass and is trying to be a better human. He's doing it so people don't realize who he really is. Mm. So I wouldn't change, I would have no, even if he paid me, I would have no respect for him as a person because the reason for him paying me is not for a moral reason. Yeah. It's for him to just look good. Yeah. So it doesn't tell me anything about your character improving or growing. I hear you. So, nah, fuck that. But, um, yeah, so that that's what, uh, you know, that that's where it ended. And then I kind of had a feeling like he might hit me up with a counter. Mm -hmm. so like maybe, maybe 10, 15, 20, something, right? I don't know if he would have. But I know right here he was pretty desperate because it was, and he was in the middle of buying Hypebeast out. So potentially he could have been in the way. And he even told me when he ambushed me, he's like, bro, you could destroy the barracks. You could destroy the barracks. And I'm like, bro, my video could destroy the barracks? And I didn't take it serious. And and I was like, I don't, bro, I was like, that's all factual shit, bro. That's all on you. And then I gave him the option for the fucking podcast. If it was true, then like, why didn't you just do the podcast with me, fool? But anyway, um, so I felt like he was going to counter and I was kind of prepared to take a smaller amount. Bro, I would've, to be honest, at that point, I kind of was convinced that taking money was okay and acceptable and it wouldn't make me come off as a sleazy person. So I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll take 10 or 15. But then I saw a few comments on YouTube as I was looking through them. And I had a few of them like, please don't take down the videos. Please don't take down the videos. Like so, several. But then I saw one that was like clearly apparent. And it, they wrote like a longer paragraph. And it essentially was like, please don't take down the video. This is extremely important for people to see, especially uh, up and coming skaters, so that this doesn't happen to them, not only from Barra, but from other. It was something along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. But like, this is going to help keep people from following in getting fucked over right mm. from him or anybody else like him so then i was like fuck man you're right like or that person was right like yeah it, it's more important that because then then that then at that point is when i started thinking about the harvey weinstein type of scenario or you know reference was like oh shit like if people get paid off for some for someone doing bad like that fucking sucks because then I'm kind of an accomplice. I'm kind of like the person who's allowing that behavior to continue. And I was like, no, that's fucked up. Like, Damn. even though I I do deserve money, it, it doesn't fuck that. I'd rather someone not get burned by him mm -hmm. or, or, you know, or learn from my mistakes, even fuck even bears relation to that. Someone mm -hmm. just learning from my mistakes and that not happening in some, some other aspect of their life. So I was like, so then I texted him the next morning after I saw those comments and it was because it was stuck with me. And I was like, two things happened that comment and then another person had messaged me an interview of Barra from like the late 90s I think it was and he was he Barra wrote something about like not having to people to skate with but it was like it's not like in your face sad but it's like if you read between the lines you're kind of like oh like why don't people fuck with you and it honestly gave me empathy for this dude I, like fuck this dude like right but then at the same time like oh damn like his behavior he's probably not even aware of his behavior and like mm. it doesn't justify it but it's like damn like this dude and i know he's lonely and so i was like damn i kind of felt bad for him so that article i read made me feel bad for him and then the, the uh, a few hours before that i saw the comment that was like no don't take these videos down so then i was like man i don't even want to keep bashing this dude i don't want to keep any like hostility so i just put I texted him this, I was like, hey, Barra, just wanted to let you know that I don't think you're a bad human who intentionally tries to hurt people, but the reality is that your negligence, the way you push people to the side, and how you leave people hanging often really does affect others. Though you might not think it's a big deal, to many of us, it actually ruins part of our livelihoods. We don't have consistent money coming in from an investor paying our bills. So when you don't follow through with your word, we actually suffer. I also think you have trouble sharing with others. And because of that, it ruins relationships. You wouldn't let me run when I was ready to go above and beyond for the barracks. I don't know why you brought me in, then uh, brought me in and then just started saying, and I don't know why you brought me in and then would start saying negative things about me behind my back when I truly wanted to help you and the barracks. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm over this back and forth. I don't appreciate you using my dear, my, my friend, my dear friend against me. And showing up out of nowhere on Friday, if you wanted to talk to me, you could have just called. Anyway, I'm not taking down the videos as they are 100% truth and that's what I lived through for two and a half, um, that's what I lived through. It was hard for two and a half years, it was hard for me, 
It was a hard two and a half years for me during that time. You can try to justify that I networked and met some people and I had opportunities, but that all wasn't worth the struggle I dealt with during that time frame. I lost more than I gained and I didn't say a single lie in my videos. I truly hope you learn to be more considerate of others. I'm going to stop talking about you and I hope you do the same. Take care. And I never was going to say a word about him again. But then I started hearing more things about him. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I started hearing more people say <laughs> that he kept saying shit about me. And I even had someone message me that I was super cool with that was trying to do business with him and try to say, I can't believe you made these videos about him. And he just told me this and just told me that. And I'm like, oh, you still. So he's still running his mouth. So now. How do you feel about the friend that set you up? Oh, I cut that person out. It's not my friend anymore. Yeah. Our friend doesn't do that. Type Fuck no. Yeah. That, was, that was some. I was. I was pissed. And how close were you were to him again? Uh, I won't say who they were, but I, I, I felt a, it was an older person that I, I felt almost like a, a family figure type person. That's crazy. And like if we became such good friends and we would talk about life and, and, and this person would vent about their struggles uh, dealing with him and, and other, you know, it's like, I don't know. I, I, it, it actually, it actually was like saddening. It broke yeah, my heart to be has. like have someone that I cared for deeply as a as a friend, as almost like a, a family love to kind of do that to me. Did y'all talk about it afterwards? Did he? Fuck no. <laughs> fuck no. I was like fuck this person. It's like what am I gonna do? Fucking reason with a person that just did that? Like nah. Hundred percent. All right. Last question. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you. you know, yeah, yeah. Speaking about this and shit. Um. Last question. So. It's a random ass question, mm -hmm. but I've been hearing this from a lot of people. Is there really like a blacklisted type of list at the barracks? People who can't go there? Oh, for sure. 100%. For it's like actual sure. list? For sure. I guess I'm yeah, on yeah, that yeah. list now. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> well, I don't know if you know this. I don't. The barracks lost their warehouse a, like a month ago or two. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. So, I mean, yeah. it's not like there's anywhere now, to go yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you know what? Here's crazy. Here's something crazy. All right. If he pulls out the list, I'll run it. Bro, here's <laughs> here's the list. Nah, the reason I know that is, and I didn't know that in the beginning, obviously, is I had my Barracks Gaming podcast, and I thought the Barracks was all about just connecting and uniting all skaters. Okay. That's why even when I hit you up, when, when we had that like thing, and I was like, hey, bro, like, mm -hmm. we could be cool. I pitched you an idea. I'm like, yo, you know mm -hmm. what we should do? We should do a video together yeah. and something. The thing is, you wanted to do like more of an ass shaking song, and I already knew the Barracks wasn't gonna go for it because they don't want to do that type of content. I like I like music that make bitches shake their ass and niggas and feel I'm not, confident. Bro, and I love that shit too. But I just knew that they wouldn't <laughs> go for it. But what I'm saying is like me as lot. like a problem solver or someone who's like I am about unity. I hit you up. I said let's create something together. It didn't happen, but it's all good. Like we stayed cool. Yeah. But like. So I thought like, oh, the barracks was all about the unity. Bring all skaters together. So when I did my show, I had actually hit no. several episodes that I did and filmed and edited and everything. And they're like, oh, we can't air that. We don't we don't want that person on our platforms. Like, what? It happened to be twice. And one of them was actually Moose, which we talked about on my Doubt Me podcast. Crazy. And I told him, I was like, I, he didn't know until that until that episode. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, like they didn't want to let your episode air, but I kept pushing for it. Hey. And I and I, I was like, oh, well, I don't have any other episodes in the bank. And, you know, it's got to go up tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I pushed for it. And they were like, okay, fine, this one, sure. But yeah, but yeah, they, they had other people. Um, they didn't they, they didn't let me air the one with Jordan Morning. I don't think I ever told him directly because I, I, I didn't know how to navigate that situation. But yeah, like, bro, like I thought he's an incredible skater. And we had a dope ass episode. And yeah, they didn't let me air it. I was so fucking pissed. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. I got a lot to say, too. You know, I've been on the barracks a couple times. Yeah. Had a all eyes on me, all that other shit. But, you know, that's a different type of story. Different type of topic. But, yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> you have a crazy ass story with them, <laughs> Bro, it's wild. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, before we have to end this video, because we got a couple more minutes. Yeah. I'm looking at the cameras right now. Um, if you had one more, one more thing to say to Steve Barrett, what would it be? If I had something to say to him? He's right here. Look at Mark right now. That's him. Sup, motherfucker? Oh, no. Nah, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nah, I just, uh, I mean, if I if I ran ran into him, um, see, I, I wouldn't go and say something to him, yeah. but I would, I would keep myself in proximity for a bit okay. to allow him to come talk to me. Okay. And if he came at me in a mature way to make things right in some way, I'd be all for it. Because I, 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 I don't really think most people 
change. I do think that most people, unfortunately, are who they are and they'll be that forever. But on rare occasions, some people do change. And so I would allow a moment to see if there's actual growth and change that he's willing to correct. And if not, just walk, walk by. Type shit. Yeah. Well, 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 I appreciate you guys. Everything is in the description. You got to send me the links. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and follow him, et cetera. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Uh, and we're we gonna have you on the Dell Me podcast. If you don't mind, let me just plug a couple things. Yeah, you know, yeah. I do music. Check out the Hyphenate on all social media, uh, on all music platforms. Um, I have multiple YouTube channels. I have Doubt Me Skate, Doubt Me Tech, uh, Doubt Me, just Doubt Me, which is my podcast. And I'm gonna have you on there. I know we ran a little late today, so I'll probably get you another. I really day. want to talk about the music too, but we got seven oh, more minutes. Oh, good, bro. Members, you know, so we yeah, have no. a part two to this. Yeah, yeah. And I got, I got yeah, more juicy shit that I could talk about too next time too. Yeah, so um, it is what it is. But yeah, we'll talk about music and all that other stuff too, man. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll collab on something too, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like you're dope, bro. And appreciate um, you. Enjoy the vibe. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I do a bunch of shit. Just check out doubtme.com. Everything is on there. Yeah. Link in the description. One one one. See y'all next time.